Gamers Podcast. I forgot to do the intro video. God damn. Hold on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, actually now welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. <laughs> I kind of roll the intro. And uh, today I had joining me, Troll, as always. Hello. And special guest today, you guys know him from all my Let's Play videos. He's been in a lot of them. J. Kyle G, it's Jeremy. Hey, what's up? I was just thinking, like, should I introduce him as J. Kyle G? I, we've said Jeremy in my videos 10 million times. Everyone knows your name. <laughs> yeah, by now it should be. So, uh, we're going to start off the podcast, as we always do, with our stuff that we've been playing. And just kind of go over what, you know, what's changed, what we've been doing. So, I'm going to go ahead and do Troll's favorite segment, and I'm going to talk about Destiny 2. <laughs> I was just like, hey, this is an exhibition of his own masochism. Good job, yeah, buddy. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, though. I only played, like, two hours? I played two missions. So the the campaign they're doing right now, or the event, is we're kind of getting ready for the new expansion. So the uh, armor they're giving us, we go out and do a whole bunch of things. We get the 400 light level armor, power level armor, whatever you call it now. And that will get you ready for the expansion pack. Well, I only managed to do two missions, and I got just... I don't know, man. <laughs> I go over this every week. I love this game. I put so many hours into it, but I just can't bring myself to sit there and play it forever. I booted it up on... I played it for a couple hours on PC, booted it up on Xbox, because that's really where I'm going to be playing now, because that's where my dad and brothers are playing. Booted it up and just went, nah. <laughs> just played something else. Thanks. It's like, oh, it's more of this. God damn yeah. it. Yeah. And at the same time, <laughs> I kind of enjoy the more of this. And I think it's this mission that I have on screen right now. I hope it is. This is actually pretty cool. This is a little bit of a spoiler for Destiny 2. So if you if you care, don't watch this part. Where is it? It's a pretty cool boss fight. Have you heard about this, Jeremy? Have you been keeping up at all? I honestly have not been keeping up. Oh, this is cut between a bunch of missions. Great. So, there's a boss in the Spark mission that, man, I wish I would have recorded it because I was screaming, freaking out. They have enemies called Servitors, the big robot eyeball things. And the Servitor broke off into, like, three smaller ones. And those three smaller ones broke off into smaller ones. And the smaller ones broke into smaller ones. And they just there were Servitors everywhere. And the thing about servitors is they are A, pretty powerful, and B, make everyone else invincible. <laughs> so there's a yeah, million the of them. Yeah, shields, yeah. Holy shit, that was not fun. I, it was fun. It was just very difficult. Uh, I got to use my uh, my exotic rocket launcher. I have used so much, and I can't think of the name. Holy shit, this game. I just, I have wiped my memory of everything. I can't think of it. Whatever. It's a big rocket launcher shoots a million missiles. Um, and other than that, I haven't touched it. I should. I'm probably going to get the expansion pack. Maybe. I don't know. Definitely. Let's talk about a game I actually enjoy. <laughs> so that's my update <laughs> on Destiny. Uh, today, I finished Moonlighter. And... Why, like... I can't spoil anything, because I can't. It's one of those things that, like, if I say one thing, it'll spoil the whole ending. The ending was cool. The boss fight, the last two boss fights are actually really easy. At least it was for me, and I don't know if that was, like, on purpose. Maybe not on purpose, but, like, the boss wasn't designed as well as some of the other ones. Or maybe it was because I just had my gear that high of a level. Have you looked at this game at all, Jeremy? I actually have not. It is so much fun. I'll quickly go over it, even though I've talked about it on other podcasts. So, uh, are you watching the stream? Yes. Okay. So, what's on the screen now is the shop. And that is, you take the items that you got in the dungeon. It's very much a Isaac-type roguelite when you're in the dungeon. Oh, good question for you. Is it roguelite or roguelike? <laughs> So now, 
Okay. It, basically, the easier distinction, roguelike means you lose everything if you die. Okay, it's a roguelike thing. Rogue, rogue light means you actually keep shit, and there's, pr- nope. there's permanent progression as you make runs. So yeah, if you die, you some lose... People, yeah. Some people actually say that like a roguelike, a true roguelike, is one where it's turn-based. Similar to the original Rogue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this isn't. And Rogue Light or is exactly like you said. There is a permanent progression after death, and usually it can be a, a, a numerous type of uh, genres. I would say specific genre. This is a bit more like Isaac, but with melee weapons. You do have a bow, but uh, so the shop right now, which is on the screen, is you take the items that you got from killing enemies in the dungeon, which I can pull up. You, they drop items, you take them back to the shop and sell them. A big trick is you don't know how much every item's worth. You just have to put it out for a price, and the customer's either going to be like, yeah, I got it cheap, or I'm happy with this price, or I hate this price. You just have to adjust from there. And then you build up money to upgrade your shop, upgrade the town, upgrade your weapons, and you defeat the boss in each of the four dungeons to unlock the fifth dungeon. And each dungeon has a totally different enemy types and... Uh, theme and everything to it. It's amazing. I bought it not that long ago and I've already completed it. And they actually, last week, Troll brought this up. They have a roadmap where uh, they're adding like New Game Plus. They added a hundred different rooms because, you know, it's one of those games where every time you play it, it's different. On the right side of the screen is that green room. That's actually giving you a little sneak peek into the next set of dungeons. And they're gonna, like, they're, he's barely doing damage to it. It's gonna kick his ass. And then once you get to a certain point in the shop, they'll start giving you quests. So you have to go into specific dungeons to get certain items. And the certain items you also use to craft your weapons. And it's, it's a lovely game. It is so good. If you like Binding of Isaac and Stardew Valley, it's kind of the best of both worlds. And there's no farming or anything, but it is, you know, management kind of thing. And but, no making babies with strangers. No. <laughs> but yeah, I completed it today. Super satisfied with it. Um, I'll probably keep playing it. I'm going to try and get all the achievements. Maybe. I don't know. There's one that you have to beat the game in four hours. I don't know if I'll do that. Only because I don't like speed running. I think I well, also, do game. you have just a four-hour chunk to dedicate? I could. You know, potentially more than one? I could, <laughs> I could, and I would for this game, but I wouldn't get any enjoyment out of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Um, I don't like time-based achievements. It would kind of annoy me. And there's just all kinds of little Easter eggs in the dungeon. There's hidden rooms and... Uh, later on, if you take too long, a boss comes after you that you can't kill, and it's, I love it. It's probably my game of the year? Unless No Man's Sky is that good, which I don't think it is. No, I I, I doubt it from everything I've seen. We'll talk about that later, but, uh, this, I, uh, that's true. I guess I, it's new to me. (laughs) To me, it just came out. Yeah, I think this is my game of the year so far. Because I haven't really played anything that's going to blow my mind. Staxel is in the mobile bundle right now, and it just doesn't look all that great. Yeah, I looked at the new Humble Bundle right after I handed out those keys to you guys from the other stuff I didn't want. But uh, the more I think about Moonlight, it reminds me of something else that finally just came out. And kind of like when I did a deep dive into looking into um, Octopath Traveler. Yeah. The thing, like, it's another game that I made such a hard 180 on, like, fuck yeah, to, uh, I don't know about that, is a Chasm. Have you seen or heard anything about Chasm? I, people talk about it all the time. I have the slightest fucking idea what it is. So it's basically like a randomly generated Metroidvania. Okay. And much like how they added a bunch of new tile sets to Moonlighter, they kind of have a set structure of different, like, you know, 
single panel screens, you know, when you go left to right, right to left. Yeah. Backtracking, you know, it it builds a seed for the world and you can share that seed with other people so they can play your exact build oh, wow. of the map you dealt with. And I mean, the art is great. The animations are cool to the point to where like it literally is like doing this some of the same exact kind of animations of Symphony of the Night for Castlevania. All the like the combat all the boss fights from everybody I've seen, you know, they really enjoy it. It's just the randomness of the platforming and how like skill based some of the randomness is. Yeah, that's what is I'm like right now. It's just like gets fucking tedious from everything I can see. You know, everybody's like, Yeah, I loved it, except for, you know, when you get outside of the authored content parts. So like you'll get different gear and abilities and those tile sets you'll play are the same for everybody. It's just the structure to get to that point will be different based on, you know, what your randomly generated, you know, tile set is. Okay. And it was just like, man, I saw it. I knew this game existed because I've been working on it for like four years. This is another one of those kind of like uh, uh, Axion Verge situations where like one guy has primarily been doing all the work for a bunch of years and then it okay. finally shows up out of nowhere. But man, it's just like I was so interested in this, and then I the more I got in, I got like ten minutes in to like like giant bombs, quick look, and some other stuff, and it's like, ah, damn it! <laughs> this looks like something I would play for a little while. Yeah, it's just like so many more people would be so much happier if they just had made like a good map. And went sure. from there. I think there's a lot of games that suffer from that. You could, you like, you could have just made a good map, and the, this procedural stuff kind of messes it up sometimes. Because yeah, I mean, like uh, Derek, you the guy who made Spelunky, yeah. they've got a no clip. He's got a book about it. Like the amount of fucking work that guy had to do to make the randomness not suck in that game. Like, <laughs> there's a reason why people like sucks Splunky's dick all the time because it game. is like uh you know a coding achievement and it's like a lot of people really enjoyed steam world dig 2 when that came out early this year i need to finish that that's on my my list of finish next that's good. but um uh, i much preferred steam world heist just I because would, it's a i have that on steam i played a little bit of it just to see if i would like it i think i would really like it that game looks so cool yeah, it's a turn-based tactics game, but yes. requires you have skill and planning with your shots. I might get it for Switch. I have it on PC, but I'm, that seems like... Oh, is it on Switch game. now? Yeah. Huh. I already played through it and the, the Outlander Outsider DLC back when I first bought it. So, but yeah, man, I, I can't wait for them to make more games like that or do stuff that's not in the like the dig style. Sure, yeah. I'm not a big fan of SteamWorld Dig. Uh, yeah, I, but I, I think those guys that. are insanely talented. I enjoy SteamWorld Dig a lot. Apparently I didn't enjoy 2 as much because I haven't finished it. But I also played them back-to-back. So I think I just got yeah. really tired of it. I can understand a lot of hard burnout on, you know, Digger-type games. Yeah. And, uh, well, speaking of burnout, you said you are going to slow down on Fortnite? Yeah, I... uh. I think I've officially put oh let me pop up my stats. I'm I'm over like 400 500 hours. Let's see. Lifetime total games. I have played 4156 games. Wow. So even if those are like you know five minutes a piece that's a fucking lot of games a lot of time playing fortnite last i knew you but, hadn't uh, played any yet jeremy have you yet i have uh played a little bit i'm not a huge fan of battle royales but I've played that's a right amount. yeah I forget, I forget you're a little bit of a battle royale hater uh just not my cup of tea yeah there are a lot of people that aren't interested in having to stay like completely engaged to get, you know, 
you got you got to be fully focused in on this. It's not a yeah comfort food game. You know, it's not like it's not like Battlefield where you're just bullshitting for twenty minutes and then maybe you win. <laughs> yeah, and then respawning and stuff. So it's like oh, I lost. Yeah. Oh, well, and this is like I lost, and I gotta like, start over. Yeah, but it's just right now, like the game meta is in a really bad spot. They try to do some new stuff, but they added all these, you know, spray guns, just all these different guns that just fucking spray you to death. So if you're playing, you know, a solo game, it's not bad. You're just like, okay, I'll just build this guy shooting me with his Tommy gun. But if you're in any engagement of two or more people and you, then it becomes absolutely insane. Like you will burn through all of your resources so fast that these guys are shooting because Epic now has three guns that have a 50 round clip or larger. There are two that are at 50, one that's 100, the LMG. And there's a fourth gun, the minigun, that as long as you have ammo, you can fire in perpetuity. There's no like overheat. There's no cooldown. It just has a slight delay to spin up the gun. That's great. And then, and then it's just you know raining death on you. You just hope you can shoot the guy faster than he can kill you with the minigun, or hope he runs out of bullets. That is my fuck your building gun. I fucking love it. <laughs> I fuck those buildings. <laughs> yeah, like the minigun's great. Like I before they added the SMG changes, so they changed out one SMG for a different one that was kind of better. And then they added the P90, which is the compact SMG, which is one of the 50 round guns. They had just added the Tommy gun, which also has 50 rounds in the clip. And the LMG has been around for a while, but it's just like. There are so many of these guys that are like high level players where like they're just like, I just miss shotgun fights. I I can (laughs) see that. Yeah. It's like I, I miss there being an incentive to build and push. And, you know, the the availability of this game, I've said it before and I'll say it again, is going to be the downfall of this ever being competitive. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you're trying to balance a game between high-end PCs and, you know, mechanical mouse and keyboards and fucking iPhones, yeah. you're going to have a bad time. So, <laughs> in your opinion, am I... I know I can't be wrong, but quote unquote wrong about fuck building. No, it's a perfectly valid strategy because at this point, the only strategy every single time I come across somebody building, I die. It's kind of that's kind of the problem is now there's so many different guns that use so many different ammo types that you can just sit there and just, you know, you'd be playing on your PC. You just hold mouse, just hold the left click. Until they die yeah. like at this point. Like, oh, this gun runs out of ammo. Let me swap to this one. Here's another 50 bullets for you, sir. All right, this one's out. You're hurt a little bit. You're not dead. All right, here's gun number three with another yeah. 100 bullets. Here's my LMG. Yeah, Suck if I don't, bullets. If I don't have the LMG or the minigun, or to some extent the sniper rifle, I don't feel safe against builders. The sniper yeah. rifle I prefer because I harass builders from far away. <laughs> and that's... I don't care. I won at that point. I fucking victory royale for me because he's building and I'm just shooting the thing out from underneath him. He's going, where did that come from? <laughs> but yeah, and, and also, you know, you add up the spray meta and just like the changes to building, they kind of change like the the health profiles of a lot of the materials. So like it used to be just outright wood was the best material. Right. In almost every situation. Because it started off with the highest HP when you place it. It builds to full HP faster. Sure, it has less overall. But yeah, you can farm sense. wood so much faster. And when you're doing an aggressive push, it can take you know an extra bullet before it goes out, like if you just placed it. So now it's just a one-hit kill, basically, from most guns. Right. You know, as soon as you click it, so that enforces the spray meta or like, oh, hey, you're just spraying it out. They had to make some, you know, damage uh, changes to building like right after. Because there was a solid couple of days there 
right after they introduced the P90, where SMGs were absolutely insane. Yeah, that's when I was playing. And then they, you know, they toned that down. The Tommy gun is still probably the best gun in the game. The the Tommy gun and the blue suppressed SMG. Okay. Like there's currently not really an incentive for you to use an AR. Sure. Yeah. Sure, it helps in like close range fights to have a shotgun occasionally in between, you know, your spray guns. So you just hit like a quick chunk of damage and then finish them off while they're trying to build and get away. But add that on with the thing I've told you about that's still escalating is I'm playing on PS4 and the sheer volume of kids switching over and obviously using mouse and keyboard because the support to go right in. Have you heard about that, Jeremy? I have heard that there's been a whole controversy about the fact that it is a uh, multi-plat. And well, cross-play. it's not just that PlayStation can straight up just use mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. I know about that. Yeah, that's pretty wild. So yeah, there's, so you just come into a lobby. Like I've seen other people play and I think part of my issue is they don't have central servers. And I get the best ping on East Coast servers. Do you know what I run into a fair amount of time on East Coast servers? What's that? South American and European players. Oh, yeah, I think you said this before, yeah. See, I think a big part of my problem with Fortnite is, like you're saying, there's a meta. There's weapons you kind of have to use. You kind of have to build. I like PUBG because... There's been situations where, like, when it had been me and Jeremy and some other guys playing and we got shit weapons, we do okay. Because even the shit weapons are very, like, they're they're good. You could yeah, use them just like fine. Viable. Yeah, they're viable. Thank you. You know, like, the, the ump is very common, and I got kills with it all the time, even long range. So I don't feel like, other than, like, pistols, I guess, even the pistols you can get good kills with. Yeah, the the revolver on PUBG. I know I played like three or four games on the PC at someone's house, and then a little bit of time I played the uh, Xbox version. That's a one hit headshot on most people. Right. It's basically like a little sniper round in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. But. I just yeah, I want to until play they Rome added Royale as well. I got invited to play Rem Royale on, on Xbox. I might play that tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. Until they added a lot of these changes to some of the weapons, other than building, which is just you know one of the base skills of the game, mm-hmm. the meta was rather diverse. Yeah. It's just I would hate to be you know Epic Games support because how many fucking kids are trying to play you know, on their phone at school and they join in the lobby with, you know, their friend that's home on their PS4 and they just get murdered by guys with controllers because they can't build. <laughs> like, you're just, you're just immediately dead because you're trying to play against these other platforms that, you know, have a hierarchy of skill level based on their form of input. Yeah. And uh... I'm just really not appreciating... The fact that one of those inputs that's you know, you know objectively better, especially in a game like this, it just defaults allowed on the PS4, and that's okay with Epic Games. Yeah, I feel like at this point I'm just I'm an old man, and I just can't play this game for kids. I I understand now. Whenever people looked at Minecraft, and were like, "That's weird. Why do you enjoy that?" I feel that way about Fortnite. So I think I'll just stick to my PUBG and. Maybe Realm Royale. That looks like fun. Yeah, I'm interested in Realm Royale. I, I just, also have an invite on the PS4 version. Give it a shot. Yeah, I've I, played a fair amount of games on the PC because it has already like decent like controller support. I just, I just wanted to see you know that a game that's re- like Battle Royale, which I really enjoy, and building, I hate the two things that I like. <laughs> They made me not hate it. It's just not for me. Yeah, it's it's it, 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 like I am so much a person about feel. Like there are games I should not like that for whatever reason I touched it and it clicked. Yeah, and I just kept playing it. 
you know, Fortnite's one of those games where, like, I enjoyed the probably 40 hours I played of the Save the World mode back when, you know, it first released. That I would like to play. And then they put out the beta on uh, Battle Royale, and it was out for, like, two weeks before it released a free to play to everybody, every platform. Here you go. And then it kind of exploded to be its thing, but yeah. dropping in and playing that game and seeing it evolve. Like it's been such an interesting experience. Oh, definitely it's been so much fun. It's just, there's yeah. so many compromises to this game mechanically already to try to make some of these other platforms, you know, more viable to be cross platform that, it's just like I just need to leave it alone and give it time to change and come back to it. That is exactly how I feel about Destiny too. I want the, I Destiny is one of those games I wish I wouldn't have bought until now, and I probably would have enjoyed it way more. Because we bought Destiny one after it was all said and done, and that game was amazing. And everyone I I see on subreddits like remember Destiny one sucked. <laughs> to me, I'm like, no, it didn't. I was there at launch. Yeah, it was trash. <laughs> See, I never experienced that. So, Destiny One in my mind is like a cherished game. So, we'll, yeah. But on to bigger and better things, I suppose. Now, both of you have played the Far Cry Five DLC, right? Oh yeah. Did you want to talk about Vietnam or Mars first? Well, the Vietnam thing is cool. I don't have much to say about it. Like, it's really just stealth running through a jungle. You're uh, trapped in like this uh, valley kind of area. Your helicopter gets shot down. You wake up. Bombs go off and blow up and break you out of the cage you're in in this prison camp kind of right at the start. And you've got this big valley to explore. You're trying to get to extraction. You have the option to go do some side quests to save like your teammates. There's three of your friends that are trapped. The only reason I really want to talk about it was this was kind of like uh, the sheer exercise of all of your stealth abilities sure. from playing this game. But also, I was not aware until I had fucked up and didn't have a save otherwise that your teammates you can rescue that can be part of your squad you can you know command them or hey if you're playing this for the first time just unassign them so that they can't die and you'll do better at the end it won't be sad that you killed your friends i uh there's some spider holes you go down into some underground bunkers you go in you're fighting guys in these tight tunnels like, what actually happened to Vietnam? Yeah, my grandpa was one of the tunnel rats. He had to go down there and blow those things up. But yeah, I don't remember which Far Cry introduced it, but in the Vietnam DLC, there's beehives. Three. I think three did. Yeah, I think three is where it started. Uh, But I go down, I clear out this tunnel, I get the little loot, I start coming back up, and as I'm getting to the top of the ladder, and I know my two teammates I've rescued at this point are behind me, as I get to the top of the ladder, I hear the bees. Oh God. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. So I just turn around, and as I see the first guy make it to the top of the ladder, I just shoot the beehive and run like an ass. I'm like, hee 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 look at me. And I turn around, and he's immediately dead. Oh, and the shit. bees kill him. While he's down, immediately. It's like three seconds. Uh, uh, down. Uh, uh, dead. He was KIA. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, hold on, guys. We we have a problem in the chat. Bob, fuck off! He already <laughs> fucked off. Good. Did he? He might not have. I didn't notice till just now. He wants to talk about <laughs> Destiny. We already talked about Destiny. Get out. No, don't stay. You can stay. You can stay. <laughs> But uh, should be on the show, but you know, whatever. In my He's opinion, just again, bothering in my, honest, in my honest opinion, the DLC was definitely worth the twelve bucks they were trying to charge for it. If yeah. you wanted to get it standalone, how much um, is the season pass? 
It's like 30. Okay, but do you still get Far Cry 3 if you buy the season pass? Uh, you do? If you don't already own it on Uplay. Oh, I wouldn't on Xbox. It's a remaster, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like a full remaster. Okay. It's, uh, it, it reminds me, because I have it as well. I didn't install it, but I was watching like some of the videos of it. It looks better. It runs smoother now on the newer platform than what it did probably if you played it yeah. on like the Xbox you know, 360. I think that's all it needed. But uh, I just, it, it reminded me almost not as bad, but of Bioshock Infinite and the Bioshock collection. Yeah, it's not a that, they didn't, up remaster. They didn't do anything. That was just a Infinite, hard port right? yeah. that they didn't do anything to. And that, that made me so sad because I replayed one and two and then I started up Infinite and I was like, oh no. What have you done? Hmm. But the, in terms of like the DLCs for Far Cry, I, I do appreciate what they're trying to do with them. I do feel like Vietnam out of the two that are out right now and I played through is the weaker of the two. What was the uh, DLC for four? The DLC was like the Valley of the Yeti and some other stuff. Was there? Yeah, there was like. Wasn't it just the Yeti? survival things? And then, like, there was like a challenge mode of you breaking out of a prison. That's right. And then there was a Yeti thing, and then there was this like, kind of like I think there was another DLC that was kind of like the master mode for Breath of the Wild, where it just added like a difficulty level. I want to say. Yeah. See, when they announced the Vietnam and the Mars DLC and everything, everybody was like, that sounds dumb. And my initial thought was, yeah, it does. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the-, I, the moment Far Cry stopped giving a fuck was the best thing they ever did. Those first two games well, are good, but 3, 4, and 5 are, in my opinion, masterworks. I have like a hard love hate relationship with Far Cry 2. Okay. It's like there are so many things in that game that I wish I could see more of going forward. Right. But then playing that game in the long term, just like, why the fuck did you do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I love getting in the malaria thing, but that never goes away. That's fucking terrible. It's like, I, oh, hey, let me hit a button to take my pill so the screen isn't shaky and weird. I want them to remake Far Cry 2 in the modern engine. In the, what is the engine well, it's still, it's still in the Dunia engine. It's the same one. Okay, well, then just in the, the feeling of these new games. Yeah. Because they don't feel it's anything like, alike. Well, other than like having replayed 2 to a certain extent before I started up 4, Okay. They still kind of feel like it's just hmm. it doesn't have a lot of the base level like animation interactions. Right. And like the like all the stealth stuff from three that they added is kind of like really the only thing other than some of the, like the animations of you like doing takedowns and stuff like that. But the the gun mechanics, the ballistics and everything are pretty unchanged. Okay. Other than, you know, you can't shoot an RPG in the air past three and have it fall back down and blow up on you and kill you. <laughs> I love Far Cry. It, I, then, then, you know, there's some game, actually most games, I don't like stealth at all. I stealth everything in these Far Cry games. It is so satisfying to take out a base with no alarm going off. They, they do a great job at doing that. And I think Pagan Men is one of the best villains ever. No, I liked the, uh, well, I, I liked the alternative, like at the start kind of conversation and ending you could have. Did you ever do that? Oh, yeah. My whole thing with Pagan Men, and I like Bosk. He was entertaining. He He's, he's the Joker. But, you know, Pagan Men, was, it, he, as, as shitty of a person as he was at his core, 
he's also kind of necessary evil for that country. Because I really, man, I would love a fucking DLC going back to four after those two dipshits took over the country. The brother and sister, oh, actually, just one. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> after one of those dipshits took over, because I guarantee that country took a downturn. I like Pagan oh, yeah. a lot. I just wish he would have been used a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like when he's actually leaving in the helicopter, I, I, when I was playing, I was like, wait, 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 wait. I just, I'd love to hang out with you. <laughs> uh, dude, we need not Borderlands like with the, the handsome Jack thing. We need Far Cry with Pagan men. I want to play Pagan men. Yes. You want a pre-sequel to Far Cry 4? I do. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd play that in a heartbeat. Did we lose Jeremy? Oh, no, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say one last thing before we move on to the Mars thing, which is that, that DLC is frustrating, but I loved a lot of what they did with the presentation, like you said, about just going batshit crazy with it. But uh, in Far Cry 2, like, I loved like, the... Like the emergent storytelling okay. you had in that game of like kind of like my big hang up long term with uh Dragon's Dogma was one of those hang ups I had with Far Cry Two, where they had a built in buddy system right there and had all these tools for a buddy system, but then you couldn't play with the buddy. You just had to rely on these AI companions to, you know, not suck. Right. But uh, I, I just love the idea of the the experience of getting in and like you start from absolute nothing in Far Cry 2 and you find this dusty ass gun and based on the quality and like the rarity level of that gun, if it's rusty, that thing's going to fucking jam and occasionally explode in your hands. Yeah. I just remember so many times of getting into a scenario like right off the bat of where I ran out of bullets in my nice gun I had found. Then all of a sudden I just ran up, picked up the guy's sniper rifle, a shotgun, and I turned. And right as I'm about to save my life and I'm hurt, bam, gun jams. I'm sitting here just having to hit the button Damn. to like go you know, ran the casing out. Or uh, like I was saying with the RPGs, the blowback would set the grass on fire if you were in dry grass. So I remember like one of the first missions when I first started playing was there was like this truck convoy coming down a road and you're in the desert or the Sahara, kind of like that dry ass grass. And I have an RPG I found and I'm just going to shoot the back truck and I've got C4 on the road in front of the first truck. And it's this well-coordinated plan. I got this. I fire the first rocket, hit the back truck, perfect, flawless, proximity explosives blow up the first truck and I'm going to kill this other guy. No problem. And all of a sudden I'm like, uh, 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 I'm on fire. Where the fuck did this fire come from? <laughs> Cause I was crouched on a hill. So that tiny amount of blowback that touched the grass behind me yeah. spread and the grass spread like Damn. insanity. Like that Pro fire spread. Yeah. Probably so like it fast. does in the new games. It spreads yeah. way faster and stays more aggressively. Oh, wow. Like, they were smart as far as like the sheer amount of rendering they have to do with so many objects and physics in the newer game where they had to tone down some of this, some of this cool weird stuff. Like the transition from GTA four to GTA five, there's a lot of fucking dorks that are really mad at a lot of the hard, like driving sim elements of the driving in GTA four that they pulled out for five. Oh, okay. But there's kind of a point because even on a crazy PC, GTA Five is a taxing game. Now imagine you add a lot of extra physics calculations at multiple angles in multiple areas with multiple layers of NPCs and cars and interactive objects with your vehicle. It's like it was a it was a necessary, you know, cut for the sheer performance and the experience overall. And then there's people that are still butt hurt that there's no single player DLC for GTA Five, but that's a whole nother topic. Yeah, <laughs> it is indeed. 
I, well, yeah, I, Jeremy. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, just one little, last little question: Is Far Cry Two worth going back to for somebody that loves the new game? There, it's one of those games that has a lot of, uh, like patches, like mod patches to fix up a lot of weirdness. I think there is a mod that lets you, like, actually clear out outposts. Huh. So, like, in Far Cry 3, they made the beautiful thing of capturing an outpost. Yeah. Far Cry 2, the whole mission structure, like, so many of the missions you'd find in one corner of the map, and the objective would be almost as physically far as possible away on the other side of the map. And any of these little checkpoints you'd come through an outpost, you drive through, there'd be a guy on the mounted gun, there'd be soldiers, you'd shoot them, you go like far enough past the occlusion point to where it would render out of your frame. And then you come back, they'd be right there, respawn. You'd have a whole nother fucking fight again. Damn. And you're just like, I am just trying to drive to find these diamonds and save my buddy. Leave me alone. Yeah. But I believe there is a, a mod out there to make those like permanently cleared when you fight them. Let's look into that. But uh, it's cool. I still think Far Cry 1 is a really interesting experience. I don't think like, it holds up that well. Like the 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 story and like the look and everything doesn't. But it is one of those games where the last time I started up, probably like four or five years ago now, I uh, like the NPC interactions much like going back and looking at like old uh, deus ex like queuing up weird things to see the NPCs react to okay but uh one more thing the the Far Cry games I liked the most before like 3 honestly were the really bad ones on like the Xbox and Xbox 360 did you ever play Uh, Instincts or Predator yes those are fucking great, man. Those, it was like, yeah, those were the ones I actually played first. Yeah, they they did so much weird shit. Like, oh hey, here's a button to roll on your back so you can shoot up through floorboards. Hey, put out a random, you know, tree trap to like, they walk through and a spiked tree limb swings over yeah. and smacks them in the chest. Those and games, then, not to mention the crazy beast powers. Yeah. Those games always felt like those developers had a list of stuff like one day we're going to work these features into a game. And then one day somebody came in like, these all look cool. Put, put, force these into Far Cry right now. Just yeah. shove them all in there. <laughs> we don't know if any of them will work. Well, j- just go ahead and do it. We'll see which works and which doesn't. <laughs> They're fun, though. But yeah, two is probably the the most likely to be able to actually still enjoy yeah. Out of the series that's not, you know, three and onward. Especially, like I said, if you go out there and find some of the uh quality of life mods and patches. And you guys also played the Mars DLC, right? Oh yeah. Which is man. <laughs> looks like Destiny. <laughs> it it like it I was... wanted to ask Jeremy's take on like how did you feel about the difficulty of the DLC? In my honest opinion, I feel like all the Far Cries are a little too easy, um, especially the stealth mechanics. But yeah. in the Mars DLC, stealth is out the window. Like okay, in versus like uh, Vietnam, the stealth in Mars is almost non-existent. It's much more action-oriented. You're you know there's low gravity, so you're jumping around. You got a little boosting jetpack. Um, the weapons are out there and crazy. Favorite part of the whole thing for me, honestly. Um, the story is hilarious. Um, you know, the character of Herc is in it, and he's like one of the main characters of the story. And in my opinion, it's the better of the two DLCs, even though I absolutely love Vietnam as a setting and a backdrop. I do think this DLC was much, much better. It looks yeah. more interesting, just visually. It, uh, <laughs> it has these weird difficulty spikes. Of, you know, like, you can't use any of your previous tactics of, you know, hiding. And uh, the goddamn, like, midair shots from these queens 
Like they will hit you out of nowhere at all times in midair. And depending on the type of queen, they're like different color patterns. Like when you get hit by those, like those globs, they'll either drain your gravity belt, which is like your jump pack or they'll drain the charge on your weapon. So you can get into some scenarios where there's two or three different, one of these arachnid Queens that spawns and they'll each be a different version of the queen. So there were times when I'd be in midair flying away, hurt badly, and then get hit by both the thing that drains my gun and my jetpack. And then I'm just falling to the ground and just running like a bitch. The cool thing I liked about the DLC was it got really frustrating at certain points, but it forced you to relearn how to play Far Cry, kind of. Different play style, totally. Well, it sounds like the Vietnam one would too if you weren't into stealth. Yeah, if you weren't into stealth, I mean, you could still play that like completely balls out. It's just like it gave you bonuses for staying stealthy. Yeah. And this I, one is just like, I forgot how much I really dislike the weapon ballistics in Far Cry. <laughs> yeah, it's awfully slow and sluggish, the projectiles. But the the thing that sticks out to me is, like, I had forgotten since 4, like, 3 late game mod or upgrade changed it, but 4 from the ground up and 5, so many of your encounters are better handled just hit fire, run and gun than trying to aim. Like, the the head bob and weapon sway on trying to ADS with most of the guns is really bad. But once I got out of the habit of, you know, trying to aim, just run and gun, using my jetpack, and remembering to actually use my meds, because so much of Far Cry 5 and 4 and 3, like, I almost never had to heal, because either I stealthed in, yeah. or I had planned, like, attacking, like, this outpost so smoothly that it didn't matter. Like, they were all dead before they could harm me. But in this one, like, you just get shot from so many different types of enemies. It uh like you gotta you know stay in the air, stay mobile, and always hit those bandages, which kind of honestly reminded me of Wolfenstein too. You guys keep talking about this. I gotta go look at something. I'm right back. Yeah. And in my opinion, on the whole uh, difficulty spike thing, I do agree. There, there was a couple instances where you go to certain points in the map, and there were multiple queens that you had to fight. But the only way I was really able to get through that without using any med packs was using the queen's heart that they give you every time you kill a queen, which allows them to fight each other for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And, and it, to me, that made the, the whole experience a little trivial. Well, even the the pheromones, those like really helped out a lot too. Like the other little glob you could throw, which would just draw... It kind of worked similar to the heart of the queen, where it just made... All of the enemies attack that one instead of all of them just go like rampage mode. Yeah. So I just land in, throw one of those on the queen, and then see all the spawn enemies that were popping out start attacking her and just start blasting her. The the laser guns, like the SMG ones, the little pistols with the constant beam. Yeah. Those things would just destroy them so much. I love the music. I loved Herc. Like, one of my favorite things in Far Cry 5 was having Herc just for no reason, regardless of how many times he screwed me over. Because Herc literally is like the Leroy Jenkins of the Far Cry universe to the point where, you know, his rocket when he's your companion in Far Cry 5 is the rocket launcher. And if you get enough kills with him, he upgrades to where it's heat-seeking. And occasionally, Herc would just see somebody's going to attack, and he'd just start running like an asshole with that rocket up. Hercules! <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'd hear an explosion, and Herc would be down. <laughs> and I'd be so pissed, but I'd be giggling the whole time. Like, Herc, you dumb asshole. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> he's, he's definitely my favorite character in the entire series, and I'm glad they made him a focal point of this DLC, because that's actually what made the DLC more mostly. Herc is super entertaining. <laughs> Herc, is, well, uh, is, Herc is the characterization of the devs not giving a fuck anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I knew, like, when they started doing, like, the instincts in Primal, they were willing to try weird shit. But then in Primal, Herc's a fucking caveman. Like, <laughs> Herc's been in every single one of these games and DLCs yeah. pretty much since 3 when he was introduced. I forgot about Primal. I hate that game. You hated it? It was I fun. I hate that game. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I think I actually really enjoy the weapons, the, the firearms and everything in Far Cry. So you take those away and it just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't get it. I need to go back and play it, but I don't, I didn't like it. So how but many then, weapons are in this one? Cause I see like assault like, rifle and pistol. There's like four in each category and there's like four different categories. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, um, there's like your AR, your pistol, which is kind of like a revolver, a shotgun, and then there's the laser beam gun, which is just like an SMG. It just shoots a steady beam instead of one blast. Okay. I do I do have to say, though, if you do plan on playing the main campaign after this, do not use these weapons in the main campaign because it will make you overpowered. <laughs> you don't mean like the Far Cry 5 campaign, you mean like the DLC campaign? No, the Far Cry 5 campaign. Yeah. Once what? you finish this, you yeah. can use these in the regular game. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, like um, I was playing recently with somebody on their campaign with co-op, and I had the assault rifle from this game, or this uh, DLC, excuse me. And it, uh, Let's just say it was a little too much. The devs don't give a fuck. <laughs> also, talking about the devs don't give a fuck, some of the names of some of these guns are fucking great. Grave Popper. Yeah, Grave Popper is a sniper rifle. There's a heat seeking missile pistol called the Nut Hugger. <laughs> the, uh, my favorite of the uh, bean guns is the one that actually turns uh, enemies into cows and chickens. Yeah, the what? Morphinator. And then those cows the and chickens Iron explode. The Iron Fister, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so ridiculous. Oh my god! And then it, when you finish it, like I don't, I don't want to spoil it, but like the end cut scenes that are like hand drawn, like animations, okay, hilarious. fucking magnificent, like absolutely hilarious. <laughs> like so much of this DLC, like really v- lets you understand what like a sad, pitiable person Herc is. Yeah, and to see him finally get you know win one. And get some validation. So fucking great, man. Like, you get so sad long term about Herc. You're like, God fucking damn it, Herc. I've had a terrible life. But poor Herc. He's gone through some shit. This game it doesn't look like the map is too big. It's no, a it's a pretty big DLC. Yeah. For, for a DC big DLC enough. map, it's, it's big. Um, it took me like a solid six hours to 100 percent it. Okay, so then it's it's probably what 15 bucks on its own. Uh, I think they're selling it for like 12. Okay. At See, least they, the, uh... they should have made this like standalone, like they did with uh, Blood Dragon. But I uh, one thing I want to say is one of the upgrades you unlock is basically the wingsuit from the main campaign. Can you just pick up Herc's foot. Yeah, so <laughs> Herc's disembodied because when he first came here, before he had you abducted to help, you know, solve the problem, Herc got ripped apart by these crabs Is this when he was way trying to do future? the shit you're doing. What's up? Is this way in the future? No, this oh. is literally Herc's drunk, gets uh, wakes up on Mars, tries to help the sexy robot lady then fails miserably as Herc is wont to do. And then randomly your Nick Rye, like after the after the events of Far Cry Five. Oh, you play as Nick? Like, you play as Nick. Holy shit. And you're just driving home like in your truck and you got beer and you stop in the road because you get a phone call from Herc. There's a cow on the road. And all of a sudden a fucking tractor beam picks up the cow and you and you wake up on Mars and you find Herc's head floating. That's amazing. And then it then it just escalates from there. The fact that you play as Nick is too cool. They, see, also, and they know the characters that people love from Five. Obviously. Yeah. 
Also, low key detail, like I mentioned before, Hurt as the robot, like his idle sounds are just like a motorcycle. And then whenever you go into an area to fight a queen, he starts playing like cheesy hair metal. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. it's, it's hilarious. And the stories about the bands. Are- yeah. Also, some of the songs are actually Hurt, the voice actor, oh, wow. doing the lyrics. <laughs> So what's the next like it's one? Not it's him. Like, it's not him as a character. It's the fictional band, but that guy's voice. Jeez. What is the it's next one? Great. It's zombies? It's oh. zombies, yeah. It'll be interesting. Because the other thing to mention is any of the map editor stuff, all this DLC components are in the map editor. Yeah. So there are people already making weird, you know, arachnid levels. You know, there's, like that. Yeah. I think I saw somebody put the arachnids in Vietnam. There's a lot of people. Like, I'm pretty sure that arcade community is very healthy. Like, there's a lot of people playing it. I love that mode. And that, that's another thing. Like, when they came up with arcade mode, they're like, ah, fuck it. You can just have our game, essentially. Like, buy it and you can just do whatever the fuck you want with it. Well, that, I love great. that they added the DLC elements from, like, the Yeti stuff. Oh. Into the arcade mode, so you can fight that. yetis and the arcade stuff. They and then once the added, zombie stuff comes out, yeah. they'll add more. They probably just added everything they could. Pretty much they every asset they, they had on deck, ready to go, is in there. Yeah, they had a little bit of primal stuff in there and four. I knew about the primal stuff. stuff. This looks awesome. So this is just—it's Far Cry on Mars. Pretty much. Yeah. That's great. This kind of makes me want Far Cry 6 to be all sci-fi. That would be cool. I love sci-fi. So. Well, I mean, all of the Far Cries have kind of been mildly sci-fi. Yeah. Except for... Well, 3 had a lot of uh, weird spiritualism. So did 4. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would just like to see a big modern sci-fi Far Cry. That'd be cool. It'd be a Far Cry from what we currently have. You know. Oh god. <laughs> you know, it, it it was it was it was nice podcasting with you fellows. I'm <laughs> No 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 wait wait flip, wait. Flip digital table, walk away. <laughs> but uh it would be really interesting to see because did you, have you either you guys played either one of the Watch Dogs games? No, I well, I played the first one. I didn't care for it. Uh, two, yeah, the first one is weird, try hardy, dark, serious I nonsense. F- fucking hate the main character. <laughs> He's just like uh, if you get through that whole story, like no. when you go through a lot of the stuff, like. Aiden makes a come around and he's okay. actually really cool by the end. It's just like the the intro of that game and like the shortcomings of the fact that every Ubisoft game ever has terrible car physics and driving because they're all using the same game engine except for Far Cry, which uses their Dunia engine. Yeah. Any of the ones on the Anvil Next, I believe, is what the For Honor Siege Watchdogs is all based on. Right. Um uh, all those, any vehicle physics, utter fucking garbage. But uh, even in Watch Dogs 2, which drastically improved like a lot of the base stuff, it's just they could go so far forward of like, like one of the great things about Rockstar games is that if you watch their path of all their games, like they've taken all the better parts of all the games they've made and use those same mechanics moving forward. Like, yeah. if you go back and you see GTA Vice City, like, cool, we're starting to nail the car mechanics. They licensed car tech straight off of Criterion, the guys who made Burnout. Oh. So that's why, that, that's why you know, from GTA 3 onward, like, they've had decent, you know, car damage model physics and handling physics. That's interesting. They bought tech straight off the bat when they needed vehicles that in 3D off of Criterion back in the day. They've since, you know, used some of that source code they purchased and built it into their Rage engine. 
but like you go from Vice City to say Manhunt. Manhunt has all these stealth mechanics and sneaking. Then you get to Bully, San Andreas. Hey, look, those same exact stealth mechanics work exactly the same way in those games. And they took it from Manhunt. They took some of their, you know, their third person shooting models from Manhunt and put it into San Andreas. Yeah. They took the crazy, weird open world, like mission structures, moved them forward. They took those stealth mechanics, those uh, character interactions. Then they uh, purchased uh, the Euphoria tech to uh, make like the muscular and skeletal structures for GTA four and move that into red dead redemption. And now like they've just slowly culminated on everything. Yeah. And every game has kind of been at least functionally better than the last. Yeah. And that's how it should be. It's not always that way, but that's how it should be. But that's kind of like the, no matter how big rockstar is, there's still like three studios and almost all of it's still run by the Scottish people. You know, like the main studio still kind of runs all of it. Right. But Ubisoft has like like thirty studios at this point. Like they're like they're in like twenty six countries, I wanna say they have a studio. Yeah, they have a bunch. Yeah, yeah but they're, uh they're not like EA where they buy somebody and close them. <laughs> yeah, they keep opening studios in yeah. Canada. Like like every other fucking month you hear another Okay, uh, Ubisoft Moose Knuckle <laughs> now open for business with twenty people on staff. Like, what the fuck? That'll be the next one. Uh, but uh, it, it would be interesting to see of like the actually like really incredible smart like designs of the open world they used in a game like Watch Dogs Two. Like Two had some crazy cool stuff. It's just the driving was still bad. Yeah. The gun physics were still kind of rough. But like you're saying, you know, if they could go full like sci-fi and make, you know, this new kind of hybrid of all their ideas, have a new franchise, maybe give, you know, fucking Assassin's Creed a break, even though I still like Assassin's Creed. I think they could, you know, really finally nail something down. And if they get it out before, uh, Starfield get fucked with Bethesda. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Cyberpunk. Or yeah, both those games are probably gonna take a long yeah. ass time. Cyberpunk's gonna be a lot sooner than people think, but it's still gonna be a while. Yeah. So Jeremy, have you are you pretty much done with Monster Hunter at this point? Um, I'm not done with Monster Hunter as a series. Um, but I am done yeah. with World. I yeah. was done with World after only two months, which, as someone who's a hardcore fan of the series, was very quick. Yeah, w- would you say it, it's a Destiny-type situation for me? I feel like, yeah, They what they did is they made this as their Gen 5 flagship game. This is the game that was going to push them away from their latest portable series, um, that being like For You and Monster Hunter Double Cross and Generations. Um, Those games were chock full of content, um, mostly because, you know, they built upon the exact same engine as the previous games, and it kind of just was easy to port those assets over. And then, of course, Monster Hunter World, they wanted something that was a true next-gen experience um, for their fifth generation. And in doing so, they could only you know, create so much stuff for the release. Um, normally, you know, the games, especially uh, the older games, start out with just low and high rank, and then eventually will come out with a new version that has G rank. Monster Hunter World started out exactly the same way. They only had the low and high rank, which are basically your difficulty tiers that you progress through slowly. Right. Um, in this game, they only had roughly 30 monsters at launch. Um, They have been slowly releasing new monsters, one of which recently released, I believe, and that's Behemoth from Final Fantasy. Yeah, that was today. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So 
I may go back to play that. Um, the only thing is, is I don't really touch it because it's on the PlayStation, and I don't really care for paying for uh, PlayStation Plus. But that's besides the point. Yeah. Um, but the game as a whole has improved tremendously upon the older generation games, the portable games, um, especially with you know small things like gathering while you're running. You know, there's no longer key quests that you have to complete individually in order to progress in your hunter rank, which is a basically a progression system of the game to get to harder and harder, you know, monsters to fight and better and better gear. But it is a game that's fundamentally almost exactly like Destiny. It's about grinding. Yeah. And it's about grinding the same monster over and over to get the armor, to get the weapons. And one of the reasons I got so bored very quickly with this version of Monster Hunter is the fact that, one, as I said, there's a limited number of monsters. And for two, the weapon variety, visually, is not there. Um, the weapons all look very, very similar to each other. See, which I is like it not when, a... Yeah, I like it when weapons are dramatically different. Which is not something I personally enjoy. Um, the previous uh, game... Uh, Monster Hunter Generations that was released in the U.S. Um, had plenty of variations. Like, each monster's weapon looked radically different. And it looked very Japanese, because it's over-the-top looking 90% of the time. And they just, in general, look cool. Do they um, play different? They don't, mechanically, no. except yeah. for... Except for the fact that, like, you know, monsters... Hello? In, uh oh. Some of them will have like a poison uh, ability, or some of them will have a fire ability, or a lightning, so on and so forth. And that actually affects the status ailments that are attached to the weapons. Okay. Um, so there is a little bit of variety, but it's not huge when it comes to actual gameplay changes. Because um, I feel like ahead. in a grinding game, that helps a lot. Like, with Destiny, when I start getting tired of one auto rifle, I can just switch to another one that feels totally different, and I'm good. See, with Monster Hunter, it's not about individual differences between, say, like, one monster's weapon to another in the same weapon class. It's about the weapon classes. In Monster yeah. Hunter, you're not tied to just one weapon class. Right. Sure, you can main one, but if, say, you uh, play the game and you really enjoy the sword and shield, you like the fast paced movement. You like the fact that it can apply status effect really quickly. You play that for a while. You get a little bored. You switch to something that's similarly fast paced, like the Insect Glaive. The only difference being, one, you can't block. And two, you can jump into the air and do all sorts of aerial moves. Huh. And you can also shoot out a little insect that'll, you know, do damage and collect buffs for you. So, like, it's drastically different and you can change things up. You know, the armor system is being rehauled on this one. I don't particularly care for how they overhauled it, but it does make it a lot more simple for newer people to play the game. Um, but overall, the fact that like the content has been cut down dramatically compared to things like uh, Monster Hunter Four U, which had like seventy different monsters. Wow. Um, yeah, and that's not including variants like you know Azure Rathalos and stuff like that. So like different colored monsters that do very slightly different attacks, a little harder, a little more health, a little faster, that kind of stuff. Um, there are s some variants in this, um, but in my honest opinion, <clears throat> they're a little lackluster compared to the previous entries. But overall, it just, it waned on me a little too quickly for my liking, especially yeah. coming from uh, Monster Hunter for you and Generations, where each of those I put over a thousand hours into how many hours do you think you have in this? In this one, I probably put about 200. Yeah. I mean, it's still that's still a lot. Don't get me wrong. And it is worth a play. And this, I mean, I know you were talking a while back about everybody getting it on PC. And I just, man, I think I'm just burnt by Destiny, where I almost want to just wait until for a year. I know Generations has been out. Not Generations. World has been out for a while. But it feels like they haven't trickled out as much content as, I guess, De uh, Destiny, because we've had two DLCs and expansion now. 
But when the game is more complete and there's a lot more to do, that's when I would like to pick it up and play it. It's not a bad idea. Um, just don't expect it to be like Destiny in the terms of like full-on expansions. Yeah. Because this is new territory for them. They've only really been releasing the, in the past decade on handhelds. It seems so, like, like the they're, DLC... they're trickling out the DLC or the monsters even. Yes, that's what exactly what's happening. They're trickling it out. Eventually, what the hope is is that they're going to release a giant update that has G rank, um, which is like another third of the game basically. Um, yeah, because didn't they previously like on the handheld versions, kind of like the the fucking shit bag Pokemon move, the G version wasn't that an entirely separate copy of the game you bought? Yes, um, really? but the only yeah, but the only good thing about that was. It mostly affected Japanese players because this game yeah. is like super huge in Japan. Um, only recently was it really popular here. Um, but they usually just released English uh, translated versions as the ultimate version. So there yeah. was no yeah. basic version. I can't help but wonder if did they just put World out because they were like, OK, we don't have to build every single thing onto the disc anymore we can just put out a great game and eventually add everything that we normally would have. Um, part of that is that I think. And part of it also is they put a lot of content. Don't get me wrong. This game has a lot of content, but compared to previous generations, yeah. games, it's not nearly enough, but it, it'll opinion. probably be there eventually. Yes. Eventually I, I do see it happening. Um, I would not be surprised or shocked if in like two years after they finish their little DLC run with us that they release a sequel to the world that will have closer to 50 or 60 monsters in it. Base. I don't think it will. I think it'll be just like this. I think this is just I mean, a thing now. No, they they always iterate like he's talking about because I've had some past experiences trying out different Monster Hunters over time. But the thing I wanted to say, you know, how Jeremy's talking about like the content being missing is like it's kind of like the weird renaissance right now of a lot of Japanese studios is one so many of these studios were literally staying alive off of just like the DS and 3DS market because they were much lower like investments like yeah. you could pump well, out 240p assets well not only and that kind of recycle a lot of stuff between games the assets for all the monster hunters have relatively stayed PS2 level since yeah. the very beginning. So like, that's easy to turn out as you said, but also the Japan market is the largest market for this game. And they're 90% handheld gamers. Like they don't really sit at home on a computer or on their consoles as much as Americans do. So well, they get they more sales a, that way. In a country where, you know, mass commuting is common and yeah. expected. Yeah. And the good news for people like me who are like old school Monster Hunter fans is that Generations Ultimate is coming out on the Switch um, coming up at the end of this month on the 28th. So not only are PC players like myself are going to be able to play Monster Hunter World, you know, in three days, um, but also the Switch players are going to get their, you know, last generation, but HD still you know, Monster Hunter uh, Generations Ultimate, which has all that content, um, you know, approaching 80 monsters and shit tons of weapons wow. and armors. And it, it's it's a lot more it's a lot more in depth in the content. And yeah. the gameplay is the same or? No, it's the game similar. The, the gameplay at its core is the same, but they did do a lot of improvements for quality of life with the Monster Hunter world. Like, there's a lot more simplicity being done with Monster Hunter World compared to the older games where it did have a little bit steeper learning curve. Okay. Yeah, if you're... If Monster Hunter World is the first Monster Hunter game you've played and you try to start up, you know, the, the Switch game that's coming out, was it Generations? Yep, Generations Ultimate. I expect to read a bunch of wikis and watch a couple YouTube videos to, to figure out a lot of the base systems because, like you said, they've streamlined a lot of the... They did some beautiful onboarding with World as far as people that are new to the series. Yes, they've made it a whole lot better for newcomers. 
I do agree that if you started out with uh, World and you are interested in Generations U, that you have to do a little bit of uh, homework if you don't want to try to jump in blind to learn the different mechanics. Um, It'll get real frustrating. <laughs> yeah, particularly with stuff like crafting and gathering ingredients. And, you know, there are, there are no scout flies, so you have to use paintballs to track your monsters. Um, the zones are laid out in a more archaic way. Um, it's not necessarily worse. It's just uh, definitely an older throwback kind of style. Well, you have to still load in between like panels of the map, basically. Yes. Okay. So like the monster can disappear off of your screen, like inches in front of you. And then you hit a loading screen to get to the next, like, you know, like we talked about Resident Evil last time. Imagine like you just hit a loading screen in between like sections and that's like the door animation yeah. or the yeah. stairs. So they the map like visibly as you're in there, like in this cave you see here, that corner over there may be a new zone in this map as you see like the mini map segmented up there. Mm-hmm. So if the monster runs that way and you're chasing him, you'll hit a loading screen and then once you get into the new zone, you're in a large open space, but it's not as like fluid and seamless oh, as like world is. Did. Another thing to honestly keep in mind with these older games is the further you go back in Monster's history to play the game, the uh, actually the more harder the gameplay is. Um, the It seems like as time has went on, they kind of lowered the difficulty step by step with each release until world where world is a lot more beginner friendly not only with the mechanics but also the difficulty overall i think they had to do that in order to make the money they wanted to i mean and in my opinion that's a good thing um but as you know an old school monster hunter player also like a lot of the challenge feels gone now until we get g rank i think it'll stay that way with monster hunter world but once g rate comes out hopefully we'll have a lot of good in-game content that's super difficult I might try this. I'm, this might be a red box for me. Because I look at the gameplay and I just don't know if I would like it. Well, it's all about the grind. It's, it's literally hard grind the game. Because, you know, like you see you're fighting these monsters. And I think it's still the same way in the old ones as it is in World. But you're fighting this monster. You're going to fight him probably like 30 times to get all the parts you need yeah. to make the full set. But you got to remember while you're in the middle of this battle, like, oh, hey, I need his horn. Let me remember to hit him in the fucking face a bunch sure. to get a higher drop rate to break off the horn. Yeah. And, uh, like, there's so many, like, base layers of knowledge you need to, like, be, you know, Deep mechanics that mildly is, efficient. That is That is interesting to me. It's just the actual gameplay of it, though. Well... Your uh, biggest, like, my biggest disagreement of why I've never enjoyed, like, Dark Souls yeah, is kind of the same reason why I lost interest a lot faster than I wanted to when I was playing older Monster Hunter games. And when I tried out the demo of World, because I've got some friends that grinded pretty hard on it for a few months, but, you know, they've put it to the wayside just because they're all trying either the new Destiny stuff or they're playing No Man's Sky right now. But the the biggest hang up I had was the same reason I had with like Bloodborne or Dark Souls is like it's all animation based. Yeah. So yeah, it's all about iframes, man. That's I you, think, you queue yeah. up that attack, and if you miss, right. you just look fucking stupid, get wrecked, and you can't respond until the animation is over. <laughs> yeah, it's very skill based. That I think would frustrate me. Yeah, I had a feeling that was probably one of the longer term hangups for you with Dark Souls. Yeah. And, and the yeah, Surge, it... like I played a bunch of the Surge like we were talking before and it doesn't I guess it's just not as punishing maybe. It well, it gives you the option to cancel out of a fair amount of your okay. attacks and roll in the Surge. And this one, no, you're just like all right, let me queue up this dagger attack that I stabbed like 14 times, but the monster moved, and I'm just sitting here like an idiot swinging my daggers in front yeah. of me looking stupid. Which is <laughs> one thing that a Monster Hunter World actually improved on is some of those 
you know, ridiculous attacks that take too long. I mean, hopefully, but, there's a demo for Generations in Japan. Hopefully, we get that demo in America. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, for the Switch. I really do hope we end up getting an English demo, but usually it's a month before it comes out, and we're already kind of like past uh, that point. I think yeah. so. We're also due for a free weekend or something on PC. Oh, well, maybe not PC, but Xbox. Yeah. But I, I do think. I do think if you're a newbie and you really want to get into the Monster Hunter series, the best one to get into world, just don't expect to have a breadth of content like the old games have. Do we need to take another look at Dauntless? Um, in my opinion, I played it not too long ago because I got into uh, the closed alpha beta and then yeah. the open beta just recently came out, like a couple months ago. Yeah, we all played the uh, open beta. But like... To me, it's just like it is like an even more streamlined version of Monster Hunter, and the loot boxes kind of break it for me. Yeah, um, that's I, right. Um, I feel like it. It's not. I like. I can't say definitely if it was pay to win when I played, but it definitely felt a little cheap when I got done hunting one of the the beasts that you fight, and when I get my loot box and I got pretty much nothing out of it that I wanted or yeah. needed. I think, um, if I remember correctly, our feeling of it was, this is neat, we didn't get anything we needed, because I don't think you get parts off the monster, right? You no, get... you get, like, these weird named items, basically. Yeah. It was like, okay, so this has Oh, yeah, I remember this game. Yeah, like, my brain was... Yeah. But that's the scary thing, was, it is mostly loot box-based, because then it's like, oh, is this going to be pay to win? It's not right now, I don't think. But man, it has that potential to be very easily. The gameplay opinion. is good though. I, I I had a lot of fun killing monsters, and it made me want to play Monster Hunter. And it was a lot less punishing than Monster yeah. Hunter. So, like, if you're not into the whole, you know, frames when you're swinging a giant sword and it taking forever when you miss, this is definitely a game that you would probably prefer to play um, because it's a lot more hack and slash oriented than it is like. Dark Souls, where you have to have your controls fine-tuned to what you yeah. want to do is where you hit. I think there's a barely tapped market for this type of gameplay. I agree. Um, this is the only game besides Monster Hunter that really does this. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of any. Somebody should jump on that. Definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, um, what is it? God Eater does the same stuff. So does Toy Kid. Yeah. But and they're both on PC. Um, oh, really? And I've tried both of them. Yeah, I tried both of them out. They're not bad, but they they're not really. I wouldn't even classify them really as like Monster Hunter clones either. Yeah. Because they ha they do enough that's different that it feels like they're their own thing. What was that? Uh. PlayStation Vita one that was like Freedom Planet or something like that. Freedom Planet's like Sonic. Okay, there's some. Uh, God damn it. Yeah, Freedom know. Wars. Freedom Wars. Okay, I knew Freedom was in the name. Freedom Wars was a lot closer to a uh, Monster Hunter style, but it was like weird sci fi, like you know, shooter game and not like melee weapons. Okay. But it had a lot of the, the base structure of monster hunter in a different aesthetic. Hmm. But again, that was a Vita only game that, you know, died yeah. a slow death on a dead platform. Yeah. I was like, along with the Vita and cost way more money to make compared to if they had made it a 3d version because the art assets were, you know, much higher resolution compared comparatively between a 3DS and a Vita. Yeah. So they didn't have as much of a a return back, which is what I was saying about like this weird renaissance now of a lot of these Japanese studios coming up with big titles again and how big Capcom's been doing it is like a lot of these studios, you know, they were operating on such thin margins and the handheld market was keeping them alive because there was, you know, probably 40 million of them alone in Japan. <laughs> I do yeah. think and, uh, 
I do think it's great that there is a resurgence of uh, ports to PC uh, from Japanese developers. I uh, actually recently played a bit of Seven. And port was great. A bit of what you're cutting out? Uh, uh, Final Fantasy Seven. No, Resident Evil Seven. Oh, Resident Evil Seven. Also, like speaking of the humble bundle from earlier. Uh, Tales of Vesteria is in that humble bundle this month. Is it? They, they've got a lot of uh, one of the Tales games. They've got a lot of the uh, JRPGs having PC ports. Like I think they just ported Valkyria Chronicles recently. That's on uh, the PC. Yeah, I have that. That's fun. Yeah. And I think they're doing a uh, the Valkyrie profile. Valkyrie Chronicles 4. One of those has a a new game coming out later this year, I want to say, that also will have a PC port. Okay, yeah, Tales of Berseria. Yeah. I know nothing about that. Yeah, the Tales series has been around for like 15 years. They've been putting out like a long-ass RPG like every two years. Yeah, this new Humble Bundle, like... Staxel looks like a game I would enjoy, but man, I don't like the style of it. <laughs> like that that super voxel almost. It looks like the uh those little Lego minifigures you can get now that are just the tiny pieces. I hate that. Yeah, I'm just happy to see that more of these Japanese studios actually the ones that are still alive. You know, a lot of them had a nice boom financially from their mobile markets in Japan and China specifically. Well, I'm, just, I'm just happy they invested and upgraded their facilities to actually try making, you know, more modern, you know, console and PD relevant titles. Yeah. Because it was kind of sad seeing these really well-known studios just like kind of copy and pasting a lot of their base work into another game on the 3DS, you know? Tales like of all the Syria Professor looks... Layton games. Yeah. This Tales of Berseria looks pretty cool. Yeah, the Tales games are all fairly interesting. Some of them are a lot better than others, but they're like, you know, more active battle system. Okay. Uh, they're, they're, they're interesting games. This There's a bunch of really them. really cool. This might be something I didn't know I needed. They're all fairly long too. Oh, I don't need that. And and <laughs> and and, and annoyingly anime. Yeah. Yeah, that new Humble Bundle like Sniper Elite is a fucking awesome game. And Tails looks really good and Staxel, I'm sure it's good. I just hate that art style. Have you have you seen Staxel? I looked at them uh like I said I got that email and then I checked also what the unlocks were for the last month when I posted those codes. And like I've played Sniper Elite 4. I played, yeah. you know, Rise of the Tomb Raider, so I wouldn't swap that. I have no interest in Tails. And then Staxel is like I kinda wanna try it, but not twelve dollars now, and then maybe yeah. have a bunch of disappointing games when the rest of the bundle unlocks in a fucking month. Like, Jesus. I think I would have bought this bundle in a heartbeat if it was all three. But it's not. You pick one. Which well, no, sucks. I think it's all three or you trade them out for Tomb Raider. What? Did I read that yeah, one? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's all three or you it's, pick It's the... Uh, it's Sniper Elite, Tails, and Staxel, or you can change them out to be Rise of the Tomb Raider. Oh, did I read that wrong? Yeah, it's. I believe it's those three, like normal, the three standard early unlocks. Or swap them out for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Oh. Take your pick. You can choose... And stat... Oh, shit, I'm getting this bundle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, I want to play Staxel. I just don't... I also really want to play Sniper Elite, and I would like to play this Tales game now. Yeah, and, and picking like from said, one of I, them, uh, picking from one of them would suck. But I already have Rise on Xbox. I don't give a fuck about that. I, uh, I, uh, the the only reason I bought that last humble bundle 
because that was the cheapest way I was going to get had in time any time soon. And that's exactly how I feel about Staxel. It's like, I was happy to spend $12 on that game and pretty much give all those other codes away. Yeah, I still haven't touched Conan. Yeah, I don't blame you. Flopping yeah, Conan's City. not that great. Yeah I, yeah, I know you didn't really like it. It's weird they chose to go with a survival game with Conan. Yeah. It's kind of disappointing. But yeah. I have a feeling like the Conan IP is kind of in the same situation as the Warhammer IP. I think they're just Maybe. handing it out to anybody that'll pay the licensing fee and, hey, keep keep going, which apparently the Warhammer stuff is the only reason why Game Workshop is still alive. I don't want to talk like about licensing, licensing out those games kept them afloat. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> fucking bullshit games that come out based on Warhammer. Hey, some of them are cool. Vermintide's cool. Vermintide is uh, cool. Uh, uh, the the one turn-based combat is really good. The the Mordheim, City Mord- of the Dam is alright. Yes, that's... I lo- Blood Bowl is amazing. Yeah, bl- I have Blood Bowl 2 sitting on my PS4. I've been meaning to <sighs> start it up. The amount of times on this podcast I've been so disappointed by you saying, yeah, I have that too on PS4. <laughs> Even <laughs> on PC! Never. Damn it. I'm not even PC Master Race. It's just unfortunately where most of my games are. Yeah, like, I, I, it's like, I would just have to, like, just abandon so many hundreds of dollars worth of games. To try to move on to PC at this point. That's why I can't give up my Xbox because I own so much stuff on Xbox. I don't really want to either. No, that's like why I... you don't give it up. That's why you have just you know use both. I yeah. might, I might eventually. Well, probably not now that I got baby on the way, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> probably not. We'll see. I have to buy a house and I was gonna say and buy a baby, but I don't have to buy the baby. Yeah. <laughs> hey, huh? Oh. <laughs> Sure how how much does a white baby go for on the market these days there, Jacob? <laughs> I don't know. Let's get away from this topic. Jeremy, you've been playing Fallout, right? Uh, yeah, I've actually been playing a lot of Fallout 4 in uh, preparation of 76. All right, so who wants to ambush him first, Troll? <laughs> uh, I mean, about what? Like, he, he Are you likes... enjoying your time with Fallout 4? He th- He doesn't like it as much as the old RPG ones. Yeah, Um, my overall feeling on fallout 4 is it's a good game um it has solid shooting mechanics it's just you know so an all solid. around decent game but the uh the rpg elements are just non existent almost my there. immersion well uh, no <laughs> so it's not well, really a good fallout game in my opinion well like i was saying the last time it actually randomly i don't remember why it came up the last podcast I but know. I think it was in regards to something else. But why does anything come up was, on this podcast? <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm a non sequitur ass motherfucker. But uh, but my my whole thing is is like I I don't know if Bethesda knew exactly what they wanted because this game took so long to come out. It was just like so much of their systems were just like a half step. Yeah. Like, they didn't decide if they wanted to stick to their standard, like, RPG route or with trying out the voice protagonist. They didn't go far enough into the route of telling that person's story and tried to leave in too much of the old, like, RPG systems. They kind of got this halfway point of where they had been and, like, Witcher 1. (laughs) And I think... Go ahead. Go ahead. I, uh... I feel like they were kind of trying to capitalize on the whole survival building thing a little yeah. too much. Um, and I feel like they were running off the idea that we need to have uh, Fallout be more shooter oriented, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, but they kind of turned the game into more or less like a Far Cry game than a traditional Fallout game. I guess it's and like that's it. my biggest issue. I guess that's why I like it, because I love Far Cry more than probably Fallout 3 or New Vegas. Definitely more than 3 or New Vegas, actually. The uh, I think the conclusion we came to last time, and I don't think Jeremy necessarily fits in the camp of, like, fuck Fallout 4. 
Uh, but like, if you do say fuck Fallout 4, then go fuck off and play Wasteland. Because <laughs> that is the old Fallout games. Yeah. It pretty much is. Um, and I mean, in a lot of ways, I am down it. It's not like the old ones. But in another way, I can understand why they uh, streamlined the games down to where it is now. Because it's more appealing to more people. The same reason um, why they streamlined Monster Hunter. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but the game, it it still has the heart of Fallout. I hear yeah. a lot of people who really love the Fallout series saying, you know, it's not Fallout, period. That's and not that's, true. Yeah, that's that's wrong. Even as a hardcore Fallout fan, it, it's still Fallout. It still has the lore. It still has the background of the story and everything, even though the story isn't great in this one. Um, but it's still at heart is Fallout. It just doesn't have the RPG elements that the old ones used to. I will yeah, say and... The story ahead, is Jake. disappointing because, um, oh god, what is the college name? What MIT? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's where the the what is it the? Yeah, they call it the CIT in the game. Yeah. Is that what, okay, is that that's probably why it's confusing me. The that, institute. That's the, the word yes. I was looking for. But that is like in our our age. That is such an important place of technology. And they kind of just made it a one note thing with the androids. Like they could have done a lot more with it. I, I feel I wish the androids were somewhere else, and the institute was like a variety of scientific things. Well, we also have to kind of understand the writers at Bethesda Softworks are not the best. <laughs> well, so, it's been like, the same guy for all of them as the lead writer. Oh, so like the questing in the game is very. You know, lukewarm at best. I it mean, works. the the writing is you know sometimes very weak. Um, sometimes it's decent, but sometimes it's very weak. Um, but they 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 struggle on making a a story, a main story in their games that are as super thrilling. Yeah. Um, even even Skyrim. I mean, that everybody lo- knows and loves. The main story is very lackluster. The main story is my, the least favorite part of Skyrim. Oblivion was pretty cool being going yeah. into the Oblivion and dealing with the Daedric Princes and that was pretty cool. I yeah, I want Oblivion with Skyrim's gameplay so bad. That would be my perfect game. The only yeah. one of the Bethesda games I'd say actually has like a a fairly good start to finish story would be Morrowind. I didn't I... appreciate games back then like I do now. Again, I would love Morrowind and or Skyrim gameplay. Well, with Morrowind that would be. They're awesome. making good progress on Skywind. Have you looked into that? I sh- yeah, I should probably just download one of those. Yeah, I mean, I do agree that Morrowind's story was probably the best the entire of the entirety of uh, Bethesda Softworks, you know, stories and their games. But uh, I do feel like gameplay wise, I felt like they struck it best with the mix of action and RPG with Oblivion. Um, there was a lot of RPG elements in there, but they didn't have the roll of the dice tabletop kind of RPG elements of Morrowind, where if you swing at somebody point blank, you yeah. may miss. Yeah. See, I feel like um, Skyrim is like is the best Bethesda game. As much as I, I love do... Fallout 4. You do? Um, I, I do feel that uh, Skyrim is the one that most people can agree on is a mix that is probably the best, um, because even people who are hardcore into Morrowind and Oblivion, which had more RPG elements, um, still loved and played the crap out of Skyrim, and so did people yeah. who never really get into RPGs. So I do feel like that is the best best mix for commercialization. And I prefer sci-fi. I prefer Fallout's world, but Skyrim. I don't know what it is. There's something about Skyrim's gameplay that's so satisfying and like just upgrading, you know, being better at the game by playing it. And I love it. They actually, oh, today, did you see they had a uh, Skyrim Dragonborn edition with, I think, the, the guide and like a fleece Dragonborn helmet on Best Buy for 15 bucks? Oh, wow. It was a clearance. I, know, I, I saw it on Reddit. I sent it to my buddy who's been dying, Brian from the, the Brian man from the Lord brothers. He's been dying to play Skyrim. I sent it to him and I think the Reddit post had been up for like an hour or so. 
sent it to him, and he's like, "What's sold out?" <laughs> I was like, "Fuck!" Yeah. I already own it on Xbox, but I was tempted to buy it just for that that Dragonborn helmet hat thing. Just didn't need it. The last thing I just wanted to touch on with Fallout Four is I feel like the overall quest lines in Fallout. 4 extremely weak even compared to skyrim's and oblivion's um mostly i i played the game for over 90 hours and i only played the base game. i didn't really play the dlcs and then recently i went back to it because i had all the dlcs but never touched them right. um i re- i ended up restarting my character three different times three different times before i even did the dlcs and one of the main reasons for that is because i just could not find a path through the main story that i enjoyed right Um, yeah that was that was my problem i mentioned last week was i intentionally forced myself to play fallout 4 differently than i'd played any of the other bethesda games and admit i was in power armor the whole time using laser weapons and i sided with uh the brotherhood of steel like these are all decisions i didn't really want to make but i was kind of keeping things fresh and when Far Harbor first came out, I started back up and I started looking at my characters like, ah, fuck this guy, but I don't have time to restart. So I yeah. just never played the DLC. Yeah. So, like, for instance, Nuka World, you have to be level 30 to even start. Yeah. The other so, games are like that too, I think. Yeah. Um, but my issue is, is in Fallout 4, it's much more of a drag to level up that far. That's true. Um, it felt like It felt like it took way too long to get to level 30. And once I did get to level 30, I was excited to, you know, get going into this DLC that I haven't ever played before. Um, I usually love Bethesda games. They, they were my favorite, you know, company um, and publisher. Um, but I got into it and started playing around, did the first main mission. Um, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, but it happens within the first 20 minutes of the DLC, so it's not that big. You end up becoming the overboss of these raider groups um, that take over Nuka World, which is basically yeah. a ripoff of Disney World. I think that's pretty common knowledge that you're like the raider boss. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, I went through, I cleared two of the, the themed worlds of the theme park, um, did a whole bunch of the quests in there, and I just, I have like no drive to finish it. And this is like, this is the only Bethesda game where I've actually felt that way because there's no real strong reason to do the things that they're wanting you to do for the quest. Yeah, I definitely feel that way about Fallout 4. Like, I just go back and play it every once in a while. It's kind of like comfort food, but I don't need it all the time. It's not like, like, if I, if I start playing Skyrim again, that's like... I'm going to be in this for a little while. <laughs> yeah. If I go back yeah. to Fallout 4, it's like, all right, I play this for a couple hours. I'm done. Uninstall. Pretty much. Skyrim, it's like, well, this is my new thing. So, like, just just for reference here, I've put over 3,000 hours into Oblivion compared to about 2,000 in Skyrim. And in this game, I only have 160 hours in it. And I'm probably, after I finish Nuka World, which it's going to be a slog, even if I do do that. Yeah. Um. I'm not going to touch it again. I I don't think I'm ever going to touch it again. And that's why I'm hoping 76 with its, you know, multiplayer component is enough to make me want to play a Bethesda game again. Yeah. I mean, I prefer multiplayer stuff, so maybe I'm probably not going to outright buy 76 unless they announce some crazy cool stuff. Probably the same here. They They, they showed it off and I was like, yeah, looks cool. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. It's just, I don't know who. Apparently, there's somebody out there. We'll see. We'll see how 76 does. Because I feel like the crowd that they're going after is not paying attention to Bethesda. And the crowd that is paying attention to Bethesda doesn't necessarily <laughs> want that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's a huge experiment. Even Pete Hines, the CEO of uh, Bethesda Softworks. I think they know um, that too. Yeah, they do. He he said like this is like a huge gamble, and he knows it. Um, I do feel like it will probably do very well, just because as the Fallout game and everybody knows it. Um, 
but I don't feel like people who are used to these single player experiences that are RPGs are going to like really love it. I think it's going to be mostly the crowd that are into battle royales are going to get into it because it's going to be a mix between the like survival and a battle royale. No. What? It's going to be a mix of battle royale and what? Survival game, I think is what he said. Did we lose you, Jeremy? I oh. kind of faded out there. Yep. Yeah. But uh, like I said last time when we brought it up, when we were talking about it, is I'm curious how much, you know, the other studio, what was Battle Cry, which is now Bethesda Austin. That's right. How much of them, because they started as a multiplayer focused studio to make a game called Battle Cry, and then they got converted. That project got canceled. And I'm pretty sure just from like, the time frame and the focus of Fallout 76 is like, they've got to be, you know, at least 50, 50, if not principal developers on 76. I mean, yeah, I mean, probably because the Bethesda proper is probably making elder scrolls and Starfield. That's exactly what's happening. This is like the B team kind of like side. Which honestly, that makes me a little less excited, but I so, can't so say that. Cause... They're about to end drama to this. Yeah. Or, New Vegas. New Vegas was I don't know. New Vegas was Obsidian and it was actually yeah. pretty good. I'm very it was, it was good it. writing. Yeah. Interesting mechanics. Buggy busted ass game. I think <laughs> Fallout 3 was the only one I got really into and I think that's only because it was the first thing like that I played. Where it was, it was like, kind of the very first like post-apocalyptic game in that. Right. In that style and the shooter and everything. You know, speaking of Bethesda, is I'm really interested in seeing how Rage 2 turns out. Yeah, Rage 2 looks like fun. Because I, I love the first, the first Rage. I barely played the first one. I bought it. Um, I just want to need to go back and play. I need to actually don't it, even need to go back. I barely played it. I did like the first it's, mission. It's super short. Okay. And uh, has a dumb ending. Oh. <laughs> but, like, the feel, it's that standard, you know, like, beauty of design of that id tech feel of, like, the mechanics. It's like the wing stick is stupid but really fun. John Goodman does a voice in the fucking game. Yeah. He's, like, the main villager guy you're talking to. I uh, I loved, like, the guns. And much like... Uh, Bioshock, the different guns had different types of ammo you could equip. See, that's a big thing for me. If, like, the weapons handle really well and, like, the world is really cool, then I'll enjoy it. Because most of, you know, Rage 2 is, you know, Big Boy Studio for Avalanche, who made Just Cause. Yeah. And the Big Boy Studio for Avalanche, the one in, I think it's, what, Sweden? Is where they're from, or I don't, I don't remember. That I don't know. But uh, like the last game they made was Mad Max, so this is, is almost good. it's kind of like them taking all those lessons of uh, apocalyptic open world with vehicle combat and bringing in some of the id tech shooting mechanics. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a best of both worlds. Yeah, I should go. This looks really like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Like, it's just like at the time it came out, it was like a quote unquote open world, but it really was just a segment of corridors with okay. some really good shooting mechanics. Like, you drove your car over down these tunnels that were, you know, obviously loading screens. Oh, you know, you'd go over the like these. Yeah, they're showing off the different uh, yeah. ammunition types. You go down like the uh, different valleys or this tunnel or over this bridge, and they were like your your loading screen between things. Which you know, what's weird is this game is kind of single handedly uh, responsible for the weird resurgence of people actually putting games out on Mac. Really? So 
this was the id tech four and they announced this at like a a mac event so they built id tech four from the ground up with mac support and then shortly thereafter um unity started and unreal engine at the time added a lot of base mac support and linux support so when John Carmack kind of threw out the the Apple dick on people for this game, <laughs> kind of inspired a lot of other people to actually try to, you know, build games again for those yeah. platforms. The Valve put Steam on there. Yeah. It was all around that same time. <laughs> right when this game got announced, like everybody like within months had either announced plans or had like the base framework of adding support for a lot of their projects to Mac. Yeah, I need to play this. I'm okay with yeah, a, a corridor shooter. Yeah, like the like the enemy combat, the the wing stick of like aiming it just right and upgrading it to where you can decapitate multiple guys at a time. The different guns, like the shotgun, you know, has a upgrade similar to the shotgun from, you know, the 2016 Doom. Or like you switch over and it shoots rockets. Uh, you know, just unguided rockets. <laughs> I love, you know, the pistol was, you know, I'm a guy who will use pistols pretty much exclusively in a lot of games. Yeah. Like if you give me a good pistol, I will finish that fucking game with just a pistol. But I was also the, the asshole who would just do a pistol only build on like Call of Duty or Battlefield and just run out there and just bother people. <laughs> yeah. But uh one of the pistol upgrades was like armor piercing bullets. And some of these guys would rush and just bam, one headshot, that bullet would go through like three of them. <laughs> and you just see like, you know, brains and blood everywhere. Right. And limbs. It was just, it was such a good visceral experience. Just when you get to the end, just realize it was, it was in a weird spot in gaming history. Oh Yeah. <laughs> Well, now that we've got another tangent on Fallout, I think, Jeremy, you've been playing some strategy games as well, some old strategy games. What made you go back and play these? Uh, mostly nostalgia. I mean, yeah. um, first and foremost, like, you've kind of noticed that in the last 10 years, there hasn't been a main in forever. A what? You cut out. Uh, a major RTS release in forever. Yeah, I um, mean... Grey Goo. Well, other than the the creative workshops or whatever the yeah, which are supposed to be really good. The Sega ones, but they're the only ones really. Yeah, I mean there are like Total War games, but right. yeah, the Creative the... Assembly. That's what I was saying. Total War, the Total War, War series, like Total, the Total War Warhammer. The they put out the Three Kingdoms, I think, just recently. I don't know. I mean, Total like War the... is is a great RTS. And... That they they're there to fill a niche, but it isn't the niche of RTS that I enjoy. Yeah, um, I much prefer like the uh, something like Stronghold, where it's not only you know a castle sim, but it's also uh, uh, you know army building and laying siege on castles and stuff like that, which is something that's very unique. I do love. The fact that, uh, you know, these older RTSs, they they do things in a way to where it's not overly convoluted and yet it's not overly simple either. Um, a lot of newer RTSs, stuff like Grey Goo, which came out recently um, in the last few years, um, you play that and you'll notice that it it just it tries to simplify things a little too much. Um, Halo Wars is another one that does that. Yeah. Um, there's just not enough depth there for an RTS, in my opinion. And I think that's well, why. With Halo Wars, I think it's because they had to make a controller scheme and make it Xbox compatible. Yes. Which I'm all for, like, console. Like, that is a good thing, in my opinion. Um, but because RTS is, has always been a PC centric genre. Yeah, if you go on RTS on Steam. There's like all kinds of stuff, but I don't know if a lot of these are even RTSs. 
Well, yeah, the, like RTS has been used for a lot of like yeah RTSs in my opinion. Um, like there's the I think it's it was recent. It was a 2D sprite based game that was considered an RTS that had mouse and tail or something. Uh, tooth and tail was the yeah, one. Yeah, tooth I was and mention. tail. That's what it was. That's an um, RTS. Yeah, a lot of it's been dubbed as an RTS, even though oh, in my opinion it's not. I don't um, think so. But like stuff like you know Total War Annihilation Kingdom that came out in six. Um, there's only one resource that you actually have to get, and you yeah. use lodestones to get it. Um, and like the base building is very simple. As a matter of fact, one of the races you just literally use units to build other units. Um, I love that game to death. I recently picked it up for like a buck fifty on GOG. Um, played a ton of that. I uh, put in a ton of hours into uh, Stronghold Crusader, um, which is a, as I said, a castle sim. Stronghold, we played a lot of back in the day. Do you know what's replaced RTSs now? Is City Skylines and uh, Planet Coaster. Like Rim- just simulating games. Rimworld. Yeah. 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 Rimworld is kind of an RTS. Frostpunk. But those are also Have you more city checked out We Are Billions? Yeah, that looks frustrating. <laughs> um, yeah, We Are Billions is like its own thing, though. It's it's like an yeah. amount of several things. So, like, RTS is in the traditional sense, stuff like, you know, even StarCraft, the original Warcraft. Um, those aren't appearing as much anymore. The last one that was a major hit and release, of course, was StarCraft Two, and that came out in 2009. Um, yeah, I do. I do feel like there are some companies like Firefly Studios, the Stronghold. They are trying to uh, make another Stronghold game. Um, yeah, but the Last Crusader or Stronghold in general just was not very well received. It was bad. Um, yeah. Firefly Studios had like kind of a one-hit wonder on the hands of Crusader One. Um, and all their subsequent games after that have been terrible. Huh. Yeah, I remember playing Crusader a lot at your house. We played that all the time. Um, plus, you know, Medieval is like love. Yeah. Medieval. Yeah, I guess it's, this, this the Total War stuff is going strong right now. And that's it. So why is no one else taking advantage of that? It's so weird. Um, I know you played a lot of uh, like Rise of... Yes, and you I used to enjoy love that. Rise of Nations and Age of Empires. So there, Rise of Nations is my game. I love that game. I want Rise um, of Legends to come back because that game was incredible. Yeah, like I recently also played a little bit of Age of Mythology, which is a great game. Age of what? Mythology. Oh, yeah. I never got into Age of Mythology. One of my best friends, uh, the you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> was super into Age of Mythology, the one that was super into Halo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he played that all the time. But I, I love um, Mythology. I, I need to play that. There's, there's, a, there's an HD remake of that, isn't there? Yes, I actually own it. It's great. Um, they actually added, they recently added a Chinese expansion. Like, they literally developed a new expansion for it. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's pretty good, too. Um, but I've also delved a really deep into a game which a lot of people consider, like, not super great, but also not terrible. Um, Warlords Battlecry 3, which is like a uh, action RPG in the vein of, like, Diablo mixed with an RTS. So you have, okay. like, a hero that you use similar to, like, a Diablo character. Um, you can outfit it with items that you get randomly. Um, there is a whole like campaign mode, um, and the cool thing about that game and what makes it so unique is your hero can be one of like 13, 14, somewhere, somewhere in that range uh, races. Um, there's like 20 something classes. Uh, there's like 12 real- realms of magic that you can use, including pyromancy and necromancy, um, and it drastically changes the gameplay of the RTS element. This looks cool. So, I usually uh, play as an undead necromancer, summon a skeletons, and those skeletons can be upgraded into the Doom Knights. 
and basically become the end game units fairly quickly. Okay. To overpower foes, but overall, I do feel like RTS is a genre that's very much neglected and needs to have a resurgence. Um, there isn't too many games like this anymore. Um, you know, I, I'm really hoping that Blizzard gets their act together and actually makes another Warcraft RTS. Because I've never really yeah. been into the MMO scene, and I didn't really care for you know World of Warcraft, but I loved Warcraft RTS games. Yeah, Warcraft 3 is a really, really special game. It really is, and it, it's something that I really want. Cutting out. Uh, it's uh, something that I really want to see a modern take. Yeah. War I hope Warcraft 4 is a thing that's real when they're making it. That would be nice. I'm not going to hold my breath on that, though. They're making too yeah. much money in World of Warcraft. And Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, and, over and, and StarCraft. Yeah, I can't and forget the, the, like, the, what is it, 30-something million they made just on the, uh, the, the skin. Uh, the skin for cancer, yeah. The yeah. the breast cancer mercy skin. Did they take any money from that? No, it, all... it was all all proceeds yeah. other than like the cut they had to pay to whatever platform holders on like the consoles and I saw different... way too many fucking articles about how stupid Overwatch players are for buying a skin. It was like I don't there was probably at least a decent amount of people that bought it for the cause. Yeah. And other people that were like, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily buy one skin, but that one looks cool and it's for a good cause. How how much was it? Do we know? I th I want to say it was either three or five dollars. It was not like it was it was pretty much around the same cost as like a loot box. Yeah, that's whatever. Yeah, I just saw a bunch of articles about how stupid people were for buying it. I think that's anytime I, that's like going to charity, that's that's awesome. I want to mention something because I brought it up before. I may have just been in the Discord to Bob when he was looking into weird shit to play. Yeah. Uh, I think it was around the time when I first jumped in the Discord and you and Bob were butthurt about the Command and Conquer mobile game. Yeah. <laughs> but I mentioned to him, and I think Jeremy might appreciate it. Have you ever checked out Armello? Armello looks cool. Armello is like a board uh, game. Yeah, it's a digital board game where like animal characters are like like it's like Game of Thrones the board game, but these different animals and they have different like abilities. It's turn based. It's kind of like on a like an octagon system, kind of like a, was that like old Civ and it's uh so it's just, just yeah yeah hex space. That's that's the. It's the word my brain was looking for. I'm tired. <laughs> but yeah, like it's really cool. Like the different starting characters, you'll have different abilities. There's day and night cycles. Uh, there's random like roles to see who at the end of every day earns the king's favor. And then you get like an ability to use to boost yourself or debuff someone else on the board. You take yeah. over territories. Like, it's really cool. I played a bunch of it when it first came out. What I, I remember people talking about it was it's similar to Hearthstone, where it's like a traditional card game. Hearthstone is, and Armello is kind of a traditional board game, but with elements that can never, ever happen with a physical game. Like, with yeah, Hearthstone, they've added, RNG, and whatnot. They've added uh, DLC to Armello, too, that includes like new starting characters so there's even like all the strategies you had previously they've you know expanded those out and added much more variety to a lot of the uh situations and you know your yeah there's multiple uh you know win states like civ you know you can go kill the king you can wait for the king to die and kill everybody else you can you know buy your way into favor with the king and get his inheritance i want to say like there's there's a lot of cool stuff in that game. It and I do really believe good. it has online play. Yeah. So you does. don't have to have somebody at your house. Everything should have online play. And it's crazy. Which is why, 
I'm happy Overcooked 2 has it. Yeah. That's a game that's probably better coach couch co-op, but you should yeah. always have the option. You know, I played a little bit of Overcooked 2 with the uh, share play on the PS4, or the, the first Overcooked. Yeah. And that actually worked a lot better than I expected. What is my, uh, so share play is basically, yeah, I invite you to my party and then I start up an online lobby where you connect as a remote player too. So okay. like these co-op couch co-op only games, you could, you know, I could just give you the controller to, as player one and let you try out my game. I have oh, without having to okay. install it or in the case of overcooked, you're just player two. And we could be in our, you know, PlayStation party chatting and playing, you know, with a little bit of latency due to, you know, a peer to peer connection. But that's pretty cool. Like I I played a lot of games through the share play that a lot of people forget it's a, a feature. Yeah, I never heard of it and before. It's it's been there literally from like the first year. But if you're not a PS4 player and you don't like if you're not buying games that wouldn't benefit from it. Then right. a lot of people don't know about it. Well, Jerry, did you want to talk about Total Annihilation? Uh, it's it's all right. I mean, I pretty much covered the. Yeah, this is Total Annihilation is one with a giant robot, right? Yes, the, but it also has spinoffs. Yeah, I want to play that. That looks cool. Speaking of giant robots, did you like Supreme Commander back in the day? That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's the one you're thinking of because the the race or class or whatever that could build the giant walking mech, the giant walking mech could self destruct and be a nuke. <laughs> it was total bullshit. Like it was so broken. Dude, that's a game I own. I should make that part of Project One Sixty Eight. I own Supreme Commander, but I've never played it. How there quickly? You go. How quickly can you learn that game? It's pretty straightforward. It's more okay. in the vein of like, I uh, like closer to like Command and Conquer, what okay. Tiberium Wars, like the last Command and Conquer no one liked. Three was good. Four was not. Yeah. Yeah. I... It's, it's 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 more streamlined because they made a Xbox sixty version. Yeah. Yeah. I need to play Supreme Commander. I need to add that. But speaking of Project 168, this game I played last night recording a video that I haven't put out yet. So this is a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, Mr. Shifty, have you played this game? Oh, yeah. I, I beat it uh, first day I bought it. This I love that game. It's great. It's so much fun. Jeremy, have you played it? Can't say I have. It is, I have it on screen now, as a kind of top-down brawler, with the exception of your fucking Nightcrawler. <laughs> you could just teleport through walls and shit. And the thing I had a blast doing was, I would pop out from behind a wall, punch a dude, and his buddies would come out and go, what was that? And then i just pop behind them, punch one of them in the back of the head, they'd turn around, I'm already behind them again. And it's got similar co uh, stuff to like Hotline Miami, where you can like look further ahead. Um, at one point, the game the, the game told me to knock on the door. Like, okay, I press X to knock, and he just punches it, and it goes fucking flying into the guy's face and kills him. Uh, there are weapons you can pick up that seem to kind of increase the 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 width of your attack, so you can hit a bunch of dudes. There is yeah, a yeah broom handles and yeah. like light bulbs, statue like it's a pieces, fucking, like it's a Japanese extreme wrestling match. Yeah, keyboards. <laughs> you can be an actual keyboard warrior. <laughs> yeah, but man, I just some of these games that I've been playing lately with Project One Sixty Eight, I look at them and I go, yeah, that'll be fun. And then by the time I'm done, I'm just like, I want to play more, but I need to play something else for videos. <laughs> yeah, I saw one of the videos you posted. I, di I didn't watch it. Thanks. But I saw like the, well, <laughs> I was at work taking a shit and scrolling through Twitter. But the game you posted was Tokyo 42. Yeah. 
And it's like, that's one of those games where I was talking about, like, you know, when I mentioned Octopath and when I mentioned uh, Chasm, it's like so much of that game is all about me. Like, like I, I connected so much with the initial premise and the more I looked into it, I was like, ah, so yeah, I could tell by your, your reactions there. You aren't a big fan of it either. Yeah. I played it and then like, God, that game looks so pretty. I wanna... It's cool. It's I... like cool aesthetic, Neo Tokyo, cool music. And then it's just a, a, a subpar game. The problem that I have, and like a big thing for me with games, and this is part of the reason why I love Mr. Shifty so much, is it's like, here's how to play the game, and I'm like, got it, and I'm just in. Tokyo 42 was just weird, and like, they were like, the sniper rifle's up there. Like, that's that's great. How do I get to that? And it's just crickets. Yeah. And it's like, okay, also, can... like lining up your shots with the different, like, I bet, dude, heights. I, I could tell that right away. I was like, this is going to get aggravating. Yeah. The different angles and different, like, heights in the map are like, everyone thought that was, like, frustrating. Every review I ever read when this game first came out, I was like, why? Why, why does it have to suck? Visually, <laughs> I am in love with this game. Yeah, I love the premise of you being an assassin in this weird, you know, futuristic Tokyo. Like I'm all like I'm all into the cyberpunk yeah. aesthetic. Even just the camera perspective and everything yeah. is so cool. Like having to rotate you don't and it's not like uh is it Fez where you rotate the camera? No. Yeah, Fe- Fez is the one you're talking about. Yeah. Monument Valley is that Fez, yes. And but Monument, Monument Valley is, is the one that looks more like this art wise. Yes. But Monument Valley, if you turn a staircase to look at it a different way, it's physically changed. Tokyo 42 isn't that way. And there's a lot of these little doorways that seem to indicate you can go through them, which I think is how you get up to that sniper rifle. But then I couldn't do it. And it just and it got really frustrating. And I was just like, all right, done. Well, and hey, uh, you just activated my trap card there. Okay. <laughs> of random game I want to bring up. Oh, you mentioned Lord. Monument Valley. I need to make a graphic for Trolls <laughs> Random Game of the Week. So I want to talk about it was a PlayStation exclusive originally. I don't think they eventually moved it over to some other areas. Echo Chrome. Echo Chrome. So it's literally they made a puzzle game that's yeah. like watching an MC Escher painting. And Monument Valley was kind of like a more modern accessible version of what echo chrome was trying to do but yeah man i love this game and the second one echo chrome is so cool yeah like because i had like at one point before i took all the shit off my walls i did have an actual like printed mc escher painting just because you know i i like i like the you know the the visual aesthetics and minimalism of a lot of his work with Dude, how I, weird it was. I forgot about this game. This was the game that pre- almost actually it did prevent me for at least a couple months from getting rid of my PlayStation three. Yeah. There was like, I just didn't give a shit about anything else, but this game was a lot of fun. And I, I love Monument Valley as well, which is really like the same thing, right? Yeah. Like I said, the Monument Valley is just kind of like a modern interpretation with a like nicer, prettier aesthetics as far as like color schemes go. But man, I, I just love this basic, simple style. I love really simple gameplay that becomes complicated, but you don't know that it's complicated because you've been playing the game up until that point. Yeah, that's what when I'm recommended lovely planet to you yes like that game like the escalation of that game of the exact same premise of just going from point a to point b shooting the things and getting to the pole to move on to the next level yeah if you but showed... then it gets... <laughs> yeah it gets crazy like i think if you showed later levels of monument valley or lovely planet to someone who didn't know it they would go you're insane That's yeah you're a crazy person why are you like right. killing yourself repeatedly and, and you're you going be like, 
And you would just say, no, you're stupid. Look, all you have to do is jump over the balloon and, and shoot that guy and avoid that water balloon. And the, the next, this thing's going to, and then that, after that happens, <laughs> it's like. And now this asshole with the hat has heat seeking missiles. And you're like, oh God. what? <laughs> but uh, speaking of games that look super simple, but I can tell already from what I've seen, it's coming out very soon. Donut County? No idea what that is. So it had the terrible distinction of getting cloned on mobile before it released. Oh, no. But uh, it's a game where you're controlling a hole in the ground. And Uh it's a puzzle game. You're just trying to have everything on this particular diorama of this map fall into the hole. And kind of like Katamari style, like the size of the hole escalates. Oh no. So there's a game I got... <laughs> There's a game I want to talk about this week. <laughs> it's a mobile game I've really enjoyed. <laughs> it's called Hold Night IO. <laughs> yep. I think I know where it got its inspiration. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, so Donut County, like, the whole appeal is, like, these well-constructed, like, puzzles, but also it's, like, utterly ridiculous, like, funny writing. Like, it's kind of, like, old adventure game humor, but with this interesting, like, puzzle mechanic of catching stuff in a hole. But, yeah, like, if you look at the trailer for Donut County, because they just re- had their release date pop up, coming out very soon like in the next few weeks or like next month i think it's sometime this month in august like the 21st maybe sounds about right but yeah like there's like a raccoon and like all this cool like art style like the art style looks a lot like uh this other indie game i saw that's kind of like harvest moon meets pokemon called ooblets it's another game that's not out yet. But uh, it's this really cute, adorable style. Oh my god, this is just like Hold That I.O. Yeah, I so, wonder why. I, well, I mean, gameplay-wise. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, literally Hold That I.O. came out like Did... very shortly after they had, you know, had a PAX with Donut County at it. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. Really? Yeah, like so it's it's not like a, a situation of like Overwatch and uh, the Paladins. other one. Not like, yeah, not even, pal- yeah, Paladins. Yeah, that's a good example. Well, Paladins also, had been like actively in development before yeah. Overwatch was announced, and that's why. And I think I'm even guilty of this being like Paladins are just ripping off Overwatch. Like, oh yeah, they built that whole fucking game in like two months. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that was just unfortunate timing. But Battleborn, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Oh my god. And by the way, the reason I was laughing so hard for listeners is because I have all the videos queued up already. So when you started talking about this mobile game where you're a hole in the ground and you absorb things and they ripped it off, I was like, oh shit. (laughs) You realize, oh, this is the thing I was just about to talk about. (laughs) Guys, there's this great game called Hole.io. It is fun, though. (laughs) Great Cornholio. Yeah, I've been... Yeah, I don't play mobile games very much, but this whole die IO game is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But it's also because why the fuck is there no Katamari game coming out? How is there no Katamari.io game? All these goddamn IO games are just Katamari mostly. So what's going on, Katamari devs? Well, is it is Katamari Konami or Bandai Namco? I think it's Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco. Yeah. I don't know. They put out like the last version. I want to say the last one they made was the Xbox 360 exclusive one. I think, I think there was also one on PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, I think all the people involved with like the actual creative team, like, like the main guy who came up with the idea, who then went on to do Nobi Nobi Boy, and he's got another game he's working on now it's an independent one i can't remember the name but yeah that guy doesn't work there anymore so then like all of those katamari games just became like 
super derivative. Yeah, which I don't know, I'm kind of okay with. I just want to play one. I I just want them to put Katamari uh, backward compatibility in three six or yeah three sixty to one. Yeah, I'd be happy. Yeah, I love the Katamari games, which is why I, like I started playing this and I was like, yep, this this fulfills that need. Is Donut but, County uh, only PlayStation? No, it's on all of the platforms. Like awesome. it'll be on PC and uh probably even Switch at one point, if not fairly soon. But now the thing with know, Donut County that I couldn't tell, is it gonna escalate to this scale or is it always gonna Oh be yeah, like, like you okay. like you start off and you're just like stealing like the raccoon sandwich and stuff like that, and then towards the end, like the city's on fire and you're eating cop cars and buildings, like like in the trailer, like the PlayStation announced trailer I watched, you know, it has like the full like escalation. I don't okay. know if you're like rolling up entire planets like Katamari sure. to replace, you know, all the shit your drunk dad lost. Like, hey, hey, dad, how do you get so drunk you lose planets and galaxies? You fuck. <laughs> this looks like fun. But yeah, like you see, yeah, this has much more of the puzzle element of, you know, using different things in the environment to also interact instead of just eating everything. Yeah. You do eventually eat everything, but sometimes you have to meet certain requirements to, you know, create, you know, increase your mass to be able to keep eating things. I, uh, but speaking of Katamari, I mentioned it earlier to you, but uh, that's one of those games like I eventually just bought because of the music and not necessarily the game. Right. Uh, because I mentioned that because I bought, you know, Yoku's Island. And right in the trailer of Yoku's Island has a song that's almost as catchy as the na 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 the Katamari, it's just like this chill, like almost like like Islander reggae sounds like hey yeah, hey yeah. Like oh. it's got this chill like music, and that shit was immediately stuck in my head after I played the demo for Yoku's Island. Is this on and the Switch? And then I bought it today. It's on the Switch, it's on the PlayStation, it's on PC, I want to say. Is it just like a crazy pinball game? So it's a Metroidvania. What? But you travel, yeah. So there's backtracking, there's unlocks, there's all sorts of stuff. You know, like you're going in a big map. There's different routes to open, different ways to come back. Like you collect the fruits and they're your currency Am I to unlock the right some game? of the paddles. Huh? Am I looking at the right game? Yeah, you're looking at Yoku's Island. Yeah. Okay. It's not what you're describing. <laughs> I see pinball. Well, this this one area is like uh, one of the missions. Like like you'll go up here. He rolls over because you're a beetle that's come to this island to be the mailman, and you're tied to this ball, and you flick the paddles to launch yourself in the air. And it's like how just like chilled and laid back Yoku is when he's flying through the air. He's just like being pulled through the sky by his like torso and he's just like smiling the whole time like wee <laughs> but uh yeah so like you're slowly like doing missions and delivering letters to people eventually I guess you're uh solving puzzles but yeah most of your mechanics with interacting in the world is these paddles you know one colors dedicated to one bumper the other colors dedicated to the other side so like Left trigger hits blue, right trigger hits orange or yellow. Right. And uh, it's just like super chill, fun music. Interesting premise. Uh, I just want to see where it goes and just uh, relax. Uh, troll. Jeremy, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Why does it say you're offline? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I put myself invisible. Oh, okay. So people wouldn't bother you. Understood. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, oh, God, we lost Jeremy. When did we lose yeah. Jeremy? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I did it just to mess with you. Uh, yeah, I believe that. So, yeah, this game looks... Okay, now we're, now we're to not pinball. Yeah. Is it, like, See, a lot of pinball? It's your entire, like... 
you know, functionality to explore the world. That's so cool. There's no, there's no jump button. You move over. Like I remember in the demo, which is like right at the beginning of the game, you just delivered some mail. But uh, I got like a party whistle, you know, like the okay. like the thing that blows out. So that could bust open certain things, but also like it gets the attention of other things. Like there was this cat that was rolled up in like some cabbage, it looked like almost. So it's hard to describe what I had saw, but he was asleep. And then I just like blew my horn enough times he woke up and gave me something, told me where to go. And then in this video, he just found another like tool. So, you know, it's all about backtracking. Yeah, he's blowing the little <laughs> in that video. It's cool. Like, it just seems chill. Now, I don't know, like, how well, like, the the whole premise will hold up through an entire game. And I don't know how yeah. long it's going to actually be. But, yeah. you know, how much is I'm this? down for some weird shit. It's 20 bucks normally. Okay. It was on sale this week for fifteen on PlayStation. Hmm. I don't know if I'll spend twenty on this, but I'll. It'll it's, it's a small game that'll eventually be on sale. They really were pushing it on the Switch originally. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in one of the Nintendo Directs at one point. This but, is uh, looks yeah, like it's... something totally different that I would actually enjoy. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I love the name of the company that makes it and their logo. It's okay. Villa Gorilla. So uh, just like this. <laughs> so just like this cool looking like gorilla just chilling. And you just see his face staring at you every time you boot up the game. That just yeah, okay, this game looks cool. I gotta get this. Yeah. Where's my switch? <laughs> <laughs> Go get me a switch. <laughs> so I, I just want to harken back to something just real quick. Go ahead. That, talking about the game with the uh, MC Escher vibe. I just remembered there was one that released a couple years ago called Anti Chamber. That was a first person uh, puzzle game. Um, I just wanted to harken back to that for a second, just so you could uh, take a look at it because it was actually quite interesting. I played through 90% of it, but it is definitely a uh, mind bending game. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I think I remember I played a fair amount of it. Whoa. What the hell? <laughs> it is very mind-bending. This might make my brain hurt, bend it so much. Yeah, it it definitely did me a little bit. This looks it, cool. I might own this. You might, actually. Um, I think it was in a Humble Bundle. But it was like, it is very trippy. Yeah, I... uh. In the Twitch Prime games last month, they gave out Cube 2, which is yep. a much more trippier version than the first Cube. But the first Cube was just, you know, like a a Portal kind of ripoff game. But uh, I remember playing the first game, the, the lady who was like the lead designer on Portal made after she left Valve was Quantum Conundrum. Yeah, that's a cool game. Yeah, that one was cool. But yeah, this Andy Chamber looks a lot more complicated than either one of these other ones. It okay. definitely took me a very long time to. F I don't own it. I might need to though. See, yeah, I'm some trying, of these puzzles. I'm really trying not to add things to the Project 168 list, but that also is why it has Project 168 plus. It's worth playing. I'll play it. Oh, it's worth a shot. Just don't uh, expect to get very far. Very. The cube is uh, it's on the list. It's downloaded, installed, and all that. Yeah. Some of the complexities of these puzzles kind of remind me of late game on the Talos Principle. Because man, some of that Talos Principle shit got super weird and fucking complicated. I need to go back and play more of the Witness. Actually, yeah, the witness is. I actually really enjoy like, that game. You got to dedicate like a small, like semester of your life. <laughs> yeah. To go anywhere in the witness, unless you just cheat and look up the puzzles. Some games you don't really have to dedicate that much of your brain to. Games like Barack Fu. 
Yeah. Which I mean, I don't think you have to dedicate any of your brain to that. So, you know, you didn't would, have to. <laughs> you'd probably be better off not thinking too long about it. Oh my god, this game. Jeremy, have you seen oh, yeah. Shaq Fu 2? Yes, and it looks as just as cheesy as the first one. <laughs> so, like I had mentioned, because like, when we started up the podcast last week, like I had literally just played like 15 minutes of the Shaq Fu Legend Reborn before we started, so I didn't even get a chance. I just want to point to out, win. Barack Obama just used a fucking drone. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, it's a drone strike. Uh, it's your it's your power up move. Like when you see like the little segmented bars under his health bar up there. That's amazing. once that fills up, you hit you know triangle or whatever your equivalent button would be, and it uh you know just throws out an attack. But yeah, so I want the boss to be Trump. <laughs> no, the boss. Yeah, I mean it's the the DLC is free if you have Shaq Fu. Which I just had the disc, you know, from uh, Gamefly. But uh, so I got to play it for free. The game, the game, like I said before, it plays like a mobile game. And then literally, I said that. And then uh, yesterday, or the day before, they released Shaq Fu Legend Reborn on the Google Play Store. Oh wow! So it was built to be a mobile game. Oh, so I was not yeah. wrong. A lot of games like this are being built that way. Yeah, but uh, it was weird. Like, as soon as you switch over to Barack Fu from Shaq Fu, like, Shaq Fu has this awful rap with Shaq in it because, you know, he raps and everything he's ever in. Don't mention Shazam the movie. I just spoke the devil's name. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Shazam! Uh, like, you, you switch over to Barack Fu, and there's this, like, this cool, like, weird like black exploitation like jazz funk kind of song playing and it's like the guy who does a good impression of Barack Obama who's the voice you know in this game he's like starts talking over it and has like these different things and at one point you just hear every time that song starts Barack Obama say 100% pure pimp <laughs> like Jesus. like they've made this weird like Black exploitation movie of Barack Obama trying to stop assassinations on celebrities, and he's in Paris to try to keep Kanye West alive. Oh my god! So you see the giant like avocado pear shaped head ass motherfucker in the background because apparently, according to these guys, Kanye West has a has a very misshapen head. <laughs> but amazing. uh. So the whole premise of the Shaq Fu game, which I got, you know, maybe 30 minutes into, I probably played, you know, 15 minutes more than what I had <laughs> in Shaq Fu than the last time we spoke. But uh, Shaq's trying to hunt down these demons that have come in, trying to destroy the earth and take over. So spoilers for <laughs> Barack Fu. Uh, you find out that you fight this guy who shows up to kill Kanye at this event, at this Paris fashion week. That's why all those idiots look so stupid in their costumes. Uh, okay. In that footage you saw, it's like they're, they're wearing the dumb outfits you'd see at like a fashion show. But you find out, you know, you see this mecha dude, samurai thing come in and try to kill Kanye. And Brock's like, ah, oh, this is why I'm here. I'm here to fight these people. Yeah. I'm number 44 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. But uh like you fight this thing and it's the old guy, the old Chinese master who taught Shaq everything and Shaq Fu. He's here to kill Kanye because he's one of the demons. Oh shit. And then it escalates from there to a whole nother fucking level. Like I thought, okay, this is just weird. And then you hit this point and you see where it goes immediately afterwards. So Kanye West, he's announcing he's going to have a 24 hour broadcast of nothing but Kanye. <laughs> now it's spelled differently. His name in the game is spelled C O N hyphen Y E. Yeah. I guess, you know, trying not to get sued for likeness rights. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, so that's why he has a big dumb head and he's always wearing glasses. But, uh, 
So Kanye West has a space station, a satellite, to run this broadcast 24-7. So now as Barack Obama, you've got to go to this fucking space station and stop Kanye. Because as Kanye gets away from this event, you get a transmission. Like as soon as you beat up the Chinese guy in the mecha ninja armor or whatever. I feel like you're giving away too much of the plot. <laughs> uh, what, like... I there's so many small things I need to tell you to understand why this is so fucking weird because it only takes like an hour but you get a transmission from aliens aliens from Uranus aliens <laughs> their their heads are literally ash cheeks and where the butthole would be is an eyeball oh my god <laughs> You want to talk about the Far Cry devs don't give a fuck? The people who made this game don't give a fuck. So, like, we've been subjected to your broadcast for, you know, a century now, but this Kanye West is going too far. He's too noisy. He's <laughs> bothering us. So we're going to send Uranus destroyers to blow up Earth. Oh, my God. And these missiles they are sending are giant fists. I'm gonna have to cut you off there because I feel like we've just dedicated too much time on this podcast yeah. to this game. <laughs> yeah, no, and it still escalates further from there. Yeah, you like, should talk we, about we get... you should talk about bomb chicken now. <laughs> <laughs> Barack Fu for an hour is such concentrated weirdness. Bomb chicken. Yeah, but bomb chicken, bomb chicken's cool. I love, like, it's got such in depth pixel art. And it's such just a basic game, but it's a very hard platformer. It's like you're this fat, chubby chicken. I love the uh, the animations of everything. Yeah, like it's almost like old school, like metal slug level, like minor details. I think and a lot of the aren't the kind of funny guys excited about this one. Well, uh, Kevin was really interested in it because he thought it was going to be more of a puzzle game. That's right. And it's a platformer and not really a puzzle game. And that's why he was kind of upset with it. Just a little like fun. Yeah, like I uh was just at work, you know, like on break or like taking a shit, I don't remember. Now he's just playing Mario. And <laughs> uh I saw like the a video of this on lunch. I think it was yeah, I think it was the giant bomb quick look. There was two videos that popped up in my YouTube feed for this today. And I looked at it and I was like, man, I kind of need this in my life. Are the bombs infinite? Yeah. As long Jeez. as you got space to fit, you got space to shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like he smashes his head. Like the bombs like interact with a lot of the minor stuff in the background. But yeah, like there's this corporation that the BFC, whatever that stands for, this chicken company, they make this blue sauce. It's like what gets poured on your egg and you hatch out. And it's, I guess, explosive. <laughs> so, yeah, you're just like trying to solve the riddle or get revenge on whatever this company is that is killing all these chickens for food by blowing everything up. I don't know. Like it's it's kind of like you just get dropped right in. There's not really any text or any story. I have. It's to just you know, really awesome looking art yeah. and a fun platform. This yeah, it's a platformer, but it's like it's so different. It's not like Celeste or something. Yeah, it's just it's goofy as hell. It's goofy, really but it's painstakingly hard. Like I was playing it some before we started. How and I died it? a fair amount of times. Uh, it was 20, I want to say. Okay. Standard. No, price. it's 15. Okay. I bought it for it, it's 15 normal price. It wasn't on sale. I just said, fuck it. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to as well. <laughs> it's on the Switch currently only right now. This looks like a Switch game to me. I would put yeah. this on my Switch. Because all these levels are short. It's just. They're hard, so like you saw like the chicken god shrine. 
a second ago, like the start of this video. And you find those coins you collect. There's a bunch of little secrets you can get to. And spending those coins unlocks another heart. And the heart are basically just your lives for that run of that level. Right. So if you, uh, you know, lose all your lives once you get past, like, the first screen of the level, you restart the whole level. But thankfully, they're nice guys. And all those, like, coins and secrets you collected, you don't have to redo those. Okay. Even if you lose all your lives and have to start the level over. You just have to get back to where your progress was. I'm going to have to play that. So, yeah, that's probably going to be what I'm playing all tomorrow night. I tell you what. Get off of work. I'm going to have to put a whole lot of hours into the game. I can't believe, like, I almost never spend a lot of money on games anymore. But I went ahead and dropped 50 bucks on Xbox to get No Man's Sky. And speaking of that, we have a special guest right now. I don't know if you noticed him sneak in. Bob's here. I heard it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm here. It's Bob! Jeremy's still here. I'm just switching the graphic to Bob. Because <laughs> I didn't make a Bob and Jeremy and Troll and Jacob freaking graphic. <laughs> oh. I only got so much time, guys. I gotta play No Man's Sky. Yeah. Yeah, I dropped 50 bucks on it on Xbox because it looks fantastic. And I played a couple hours of it. You couldn't have played much at this point, Bob. Oh, no. No, not at all. Maybe in uh, an hour. Are you enjoying it so far? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm currently caught in a firestorm. This is great. A what? A firestorm. What is this shit? Firestorm or a radiation storm? I got a radiation storm. No, this is a this is a firestorm. Oh, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I've played a bunch of it. I've been you know like in this video, I'm going around scanning things. I don't know why I get so much enjoyment out of <gasps> what is that. I just scanned that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I'm like, oh, what's this? <laughs> it's, a, it's the goofiest fucking gameplay loop, but it's so much fun. I thought I was instantly gonna be like, I gotta build a base. I haven't had, I haven't had that feeling yet. Um, I will say, I don't know if you know this, Bob and Jeremy, but if you go with a terrain manipulator tool and like tear down areas and even like build underground or in a mountain it only retains up to like 5,000 things done with that tool. So if you really? go to another planet and use it a bunch, your base will be gone when you go back. Hmm. So right now, yeah. don't use that. Just build your base above ground. Hopefully they're going to fix but that. But here's the other thing, since uh, looking at uh, Bob's responses there in the Discord before he snuck in here, he uh, shot a sentinel. Yeah. You want to yeah, you know the surefire was... way to get away from the sentinels, Bob? I don't What's know either. Dig a small tunnel and hide. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. I you just have to cave. hide for like a few seconds before they run. Yeah. I found a cave and tried to hide from them in there, but they I guess they must have watched me go into the cave because they were like, oh, hey, how you doing? Have you played this troll? I played it a fair amount at the original launch. I've got it reinstalled on my PlayStation because my roommate bought it. And, you know, we uh, library share. Yeah. So, you know, we just kind of go half and half on all the games we buy, which realistically, I'm the fucking video game creep. So there's like (laughs) 95% of the games are ones I bought. And a lot of the like new games that are big and coming out that we were buying day one is the ones we split. But, uh, See, this I've been meaning to give it a touch up again, but you know, yeah. it's funny is like the thing, the, the things you were talking about, you were enjoying that discovery yeah, has been there since the game launched. It's just sure. with these updates, they've actually made that variety, you know, more varied. But the thing that I'm not going to have a problem with that games like monster hunter and destiny have had a problem is I'm buying this late into the cycle so I'm not going to yeah. run into that that wall as quickly or at all. Yeah, this is two years in now already. That's why everyone, like, I, I've had people tell me, like, why are you playing that? Do you not know that, like, you're going to hit a wall? Like, no, I'm not, because <laughs> I waited forever. Dude, I haven't watched any videos on this game. I'm going in blind as hell. 
Me too, and this is fantastic right yeah. now. Yeah. I think I did it the right way. I, I I understand that people feel like No Man's Sky is like a big scam and stuff, but I think they're a small team who just talked a little too much. They had uh they took too many lessons from uh what the hell is that game dev's name? You're, go- you're trying to say Peter Molyneux. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they came from the school of Peter Molyneux. And it, it's just unfortunate. But, you know, this is a good example why you don't pre-order games. <laughs> yeah. Especially Even new I'm IPs. starting to get away from that now. Especially new IPs. Like, I think we were just talking, not on the podcast, but I'm going to pre-order Smash Brothers because what are the odds that that game sucks? Like, slim to none. <laughs> <laughs> watch it watch it be fucking terrible i know right what and i don't think it'll be because i there's i have yet to play a bad super smash Bros. game what is that <laughs> <laughs> bob is currently playing no man's sky yeah and there's i'm assuming somebody <laughs> flying around can they kill me oh if other you've got an open lobby yeah they can shoot you dead oh brother <laughs> <laughs> bob's about to get ganked Probably. Uh oh. My main issue with No Man's Sky is like it, they pad out the gameplay Uh-oh. endless loop of collecting. Yeah. And the collecting is fine and dandy, but the way they have it set up is it's very slow. I'm okay with that. Dude, you played the fuck out of Ark. <laughs> even, even Ark, though, like I played on you know, custom servers where everything was turned up. That's fair. Like base, yeah. base arc is super slow too. Like with this though, you don't have that control. So like right. everything is like, like this is a game that's been padded out by resource collecting to the point where it kind of, after a while gets dull to me. Is it- well, see, that's the thing with like, especially since they've added like freighters and other like trading. Cause you get a certain point in this game. Cause my room has been playing the fuck out of this. And I got a couple of my friends that have been playing it. But basically, once you hit a certain point and, like, escalate to, like, the freighter status, that you're just, awesome. like, if you're if you're wasting your time mining resources, you're fucking up. Because by the point you get to the freighter, you make so many credits. You should just be buying the resources as you need. Good to know. And if you're in an emergency, you know, mine some stuff. But it eventually just becomes a point of, you know, scanning new things to keep credits coming in because you upgrade your scanner and you start getting massive amounts of cash every time you scan something new and then you know buy the resources as you need them and then you're kind of free to explore also they added creative mode to just go in and look around and fuck around as much as you want yeah i was happy to see that and they added i don't know if they added see i don't know what the fuck they added what they didn't but there's a permadeath (laughs) mode that's pretty cool. Um, and a, a hardcore mode as well. I'm just There's a hardcore it. mode? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what it is. But yeah, I'm playing on normal. Oh, yeah, me too. But I, I love like being able to tag things in the distance like I just did there. Finding all the buildings. Um, one thing that got me really excited, I saw uh, it was like a tips video. They were talking about all the different ships you can get. Which I instantly thought, well, Bob's going to want to play this because he loves Star Citizen. Yep, and, and Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But this Just game feels like everything. what Star Citizen almost wants to be one day. And that could be. But it's it's now. <laughs> yeah, but this also, I don't know. We're not going to get into that dis- discussion. <laughs> Do you feel like it's not a fair comparison? I have barely got to play Star Citizen, even though you know I love the copy you bought me. But it just doesn't work on my PC. No, I know. Is um, it not a fair comparison? Because from the outside, it seems like it is. I I don't know because I haven't played enough of this to tell you that yet. Okay. I know with Star Citizen, you, do you collect resources? No. Well, they had the mining thing, or is that coming out soon? Mining is out now, but that was just a recent thing. Oh shit. <laughs> What do you what do you want from me? Are you just gonna scan me and go away? All right, cool. Oh yeah, if I yeah, think the the Sentinels don't like it when you fuck with the planet. Yeah, uh, that's their whole point. But occasionally you get into systems, 
and on certain planets where they're just fucking aggro at all. If you right. land on that planet, you need to join... you're violating their rules, and you're gonna get killed. You need to join the No Man's Sky subreddit, Bob. Oh, there's there. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. why wouldn't there be a subreddit? <laughs> but like somebody posted today, like I finally found it after hours of searching. I found a planet with no radiation and no sentinels. I'm like, that's so fucking cool. Like, really? I'm so happy for you, guy. Like, and he's gonna start building his base. He's like, <laughs> also, I found my home. <laughs> like one of the coolest things I've seen so far, and like how many fucking like Instagram and Twitter feeds now are filled with like screenshots in this game because they added a photo mode. I've oh, seen okay. that there was a photo mode. And the cool thing about the photo mode in this game compared to like most other photo modes they've added other like pretty much m- almost all the first party Sony games on the PS4 have added like really cool photo modes. But in this one, like you can adjust the placement of the sun. Uh. To like really, really get like the lighting and like the, awesome. the perspective like you can just change like the entire like kind of like rotate the sky to get to the right spot you want where you're still standing on the planet right there and align things just right so yeah you, you can do some straight up like instagram wizardry with this shit now <laughs> the and reason... it's mm-hmm. super cool the whole thing with this game for me is the whole reason why I love Stardew Valley and Moonlighter and all these games where it's like, all right, I get this, and I understand where this could go. I want the could go part is so exciting (laughs) to me. Like, where is it? Like, this rusted metal I just picked up in the video? What the hell is that for? I have no idea. Can't wait to find out. Plutonium? (laughs) What the hell is that for? Can't wait to find out. All those things are super exciting to me, and, like, there's base building, which I hadn't even touched, and, like, God, I spend so many hours in freaking Minecraft and all these other building games. I'm, I'm just, this game ticks so many boxes for me. I'm excited to play a lot of it, and probably stream a good chunk of it. Yeah, I would definitely like to stream this. You should be. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, I I was trying to dig a hole here. I think yeah, and that's one thing. Like, I don't think the tutorials are great in this. There's no a lot the of stuff. onboarding is still bad. Yeah, it's better than it was at launch. That's scary. but you know my roommate trying to start back over and figure out how to play again it was really interesting. I spent a long time with the game being like scan for oxygen. It's the red diamond or whatever <laughs> and i'm scanning like no it's not i don't see it anywhere <laughs> and i just couldn't find any well another thing since this update that they did was the third person mode mm-hmm. and when i first played the game of course you know it came out as only first actually enjoy that a lot more so i was struggling just to figure out how to switch to first person they never explained it and you go into the controls and it's not under controls yes and like at least on pc you have to hit like it was either z x or c some something like that and then you have to go through an in-game menu that you can only access through that to change which was super annoying and super convoluted by the way just to avoid comments of you're dumb I know it just showed the red diamond, but it also said hazardous Florida, which to me says stay the fuck away. <laughs> so hazardous I stayed... Florida? Wait, 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 wait. wait Flora, wait. like so, flower. So you're telling me there is first person? Yes. Um. Yeah, that's how the game was originally made. Oh, I don't know how it's different on Xbox. Oh, Jesus, you and your Xbox. <laughs> you're probably just going to look it up. You definitely just got to look it up. Yeah, you can go first person. You can go first and third in the ship as well. Yeah, you can have it be third person in the ship and first person on ground. A lot of people seem to like that. Yeah, Hmm. and I know like one of the videos I was watching, the guy was like, I spent a lot of time getting this ship. Of course it's going to be third person. But first person in that ship is so fucking cool. I like flying in first person. I think that's just such a Especially when you're leaving the atmosphere. Like, it's... Yes. Like... Like that moment, regardless of how like uninterested I was in the game, like when it first came out, like I played a fair amount, but then I was still within that window where I was able to get like my refund on it, and then I bought Battlefield One oh, that was a instead. But uh, 
Well, I mean, it it wasn't compared to what you know No Man's Sky was offering at the time. That's fair. But uh, it's just yeah, still that first time you hit that warp, you're just flying through the air. Yeah. That first time you just left the planet, beginning. Man, that stuff. That that was the good stuff. Yeah, right now is pretty much the moment we're talking about. I just left the planet, <laughs> figuring it out. Oh, and man, Jesus. when you hit, when you hit those buttons to jump, I literally yelled, "Punch it, Chewy!" That <laughs> <is> so <laughs> fucking, it's so cool. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna yell that. <laughs> You'll probably say like warp drive mr spock or whatever the fuck you trekkies okay so (laughs) speaking of trekkies i know you don't care and i don't fucking care that you don't care i was gonna say you talking about picard yep fucking that's cool he's coming back to star trek he's my favorite captain i make fun of trekkies (laughs) but it is a good show star wars is just better i fucking hate you (laughs) just want you to know that (sighs) So, does anybody else have anything else to say about No Man's Sky? I'll have more to say once I know more. <laughs> For now, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm definitely well, enjoying myself. Yeah, I finished Moonlighter, so I'm. I'm. This is my next. Game I seen you were game. playing it earlier. Yep, I'm done with it. Well, I'm not done with it. I'll still play it, but I yeah, completed. Yeah, the, right. You're done with it. <laughs> I completed the campaign. Did you see? We had somebody from the. The guild actually joined Discord tonight. You want to talk about that before we wrap up the podcast? Uh, yeah. Um, we started a well, we I started a wild guild, and uh, we are on Trollbane. We are horde only. Keep your alliance shit out of there. And your trolls apparently, so you're not welcome, Trollbeard. <laughs> I know. Wait, what? Why? We, we talked about this <laughs> last week because it's named the troll. bane of trolls. Oh, <laughs> um, well, that's all right. Trolls are welcome. You say There's that. a serum somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if anyone's interested in joining, that's where we're at. We're up to like somewhere between 17 and 20 people now. Ish. We, we need to we need to make a thing on the website people can go to. Yeah, we do. We so definitely keep, do. Keep an eye on futurevillains.com for that. Yeah, but we had our first person join in Discord today, so that was That's pretty all? neat. We're getting there. We're moving right along. So are you playing anything? I mean, we're almost at three hours at this point. You should have been here earlier. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Did you want to talk about WoW or anything? I do, but you guys are already at three hours. We so <laughs> You'll just have to be on next week. Maybe. I We'll see. I doubt it. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening to the Future Gamers podcast. Uh, thank you, Bob, for joining us. Thank you, our special guest, Jeremy, for joining us. Jeremy should be on more in the future, and of course, so will Bob. Troll's always here. And uh, if you haven't watched it yet, go check out the new Lurk Brothers video. I've got the new Project 168 stuff coming out. Uh, Mr. Shifty, Loof Trousers, uh, Tokyo 42 and some other stuff and of course I'm still going to have I think I'll probably just put out streams of No Man's Sky because if I do a series I'm just going to be so fucking far behind if I break <laughs> it up into episodes so I'm just going to play this oh, game yeah, that'll take forever. yeah it would pretty much be like our old Destiny series where that series was so <sighs> like far six ahead million videos, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh that's it, Bob. You just wanted to plug the WoW thing. Nobody else has anything to plug. So, this is the end of the podcast. I have I'm a glad I could bring in the tail end. Absolutely. I, I have a button to turn this thing off now. Here it goes. Oh, god damn. Ah, it's the wrong 